Hello guys and welcome to the new video. It's been over a month uh, and I th really think it's time uh, for a new video. Um, the new update of the Breakthrough Hut is finally been released. It's been released today. Uh, so I didn't want to make a video uh, before I make a new update because it, it is significant. Um, we made uh, four new pop-ups and over few hundreds of new stats uh, like all possible lines uh, in I think we're really really important aspects of check raising and raising in position we check back ranges in this in these instances uh, I'm gonna go uh, 150 here so let's first play hand and I will talk you through this in today's sessions that we started in 10 p.m. so pretty pretty early and we have a lot of time so we're gonna go get to it eventually we're gonna play today four tables on eye poker uh, we bet on king queen deuce and heads up we go with the one fifth size which I think is okay we have the linear tribute range uh, we're gonna bet this board frequently I'm gonna basically have two sizes there. I'm gonna get, have really small size and the big one. I'm not gonna have only one size because I think having two on this board is really good. And on the 10, I'm gonna just check. Did I raise queen? He did tank to loft and call. To this size, it's tricky because he needs to call these pocket pairs. They're gonna be awkward to play. I think hand like ace jack would snap call or jack nine with a gut shot. So he tanked a bit and, and decided to call at the end. Hence like a flush I think with snap called and or fast call. Even if he did think about raising, we're gonna call. I think the only hands that has a lot of sense, I mean, of tanking are hands that he's unsure of. Or he was like thinking about raising with, hmm, with a flush draw. I don't think he would wait until less seconds. And this is his stats in uh, in the six max. Uh, we're gonna check him out a little bit. He never overbet the river. Never ever. Hmm. Really strange, guys. Uh, the position he did two times. That sounds really, really bluffy to me. It didn't have sense. I, if I had a hard out snap call, he showed with the ace time. You see, like he had that hand that he he was unsure what he need to do there. You see, like one fifth size, he was unsure until less seconds. He was unsure. I would snap call even with this hand with which I know is fault uh, generally uh, I was thinking about calling and if I did find in a hut that he did like or bet bluffed but he never did it he just had the nuts three times um, I would even call this hand that is that is a fault to me it look like exactly a hand that he's unsure of calling and now he's turning that into bluff. It looks it look immediately like that. If we did get hard, I would be snapping him. And even now I did think about it. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go with tribute. We have a polarized tribute range. King tree is tribute. 
I have one table on the side guys just in case if something happens if so if something happens we have a table ready because there's a chance the table will break okay I'm not sure about this guy we read through the guy but unfortunately unfortunately I didn't find the reason to call a hand that is a fold with a heart I would call him and also if I did see one bluff in these spots I would also call him but he was pretty fortunate one heart it would be snap <coughs> we're gonna go small three but He is short. We have check raised on the other table, guys. Um, pretty interesting flop. Uh, we're gonna go one hot with this SPR. We got check raise on nine nine six. Okay, three bit here, and we have the check back on river, guys. Check back on the river. Flop was nine 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 six nine. Uh, he checked raise. We called. We bet one third turn. He checked. We bet small. He called. We will. We check back. And we're gonna go again one fifth on this board. Okay, guys, now I'm going to tell you a little something about the update. Uh, we made uh, two, com two completely new pop-ups -up, uh, pop uh, regarding the fish. Um, I didn't concentrate much on fish uh, on my, in my program because the breakthrough is meant to break through two wrecks and uh, to crush their ranges. Uh, but with fish, I didn't really care much until I saw that actually against the fish I'm doing the worst <laughs> I'm not doing well at all uh, here in iPoker actually on 50k hands where I play with two big whales on the table I'm losing and I'm losing a lot so uh, it was alarm bell and also on my uh, other accounts on stars uh, where I have 10 BBs uh, on 300, uh, 300k hands without any fish at the table 10 BBs in any uh, I noticed that against the fish uh, I'm not doing great, uh, you know, uh, it seems that fish can give me trouble and then a small alarm uh, got into my head and I, and I said, okay, now let's try to, to fix it. Let's try to fix that. Uh, and I did give myself a little time to make, uh, to make uh, a tool where I can uh, have uh, opportunity to arrange fish way better and we made a completely new pop-ups for for playing against the fish with all possible lines to see their whole range and how to break the range it's definitely something that I needed because uh, you know you, you never in anything want to underestimate your opponent and I did that and I did that for years and we have interesting spot where guy doesn't rep much doesn't rep much but it's pretty passive guy I'm gonna fold king nine poo, poo, poo. 
doesn't trip much and we block a lot of radio but the guy is not laughing or anything so I'm gonna fold um, and yeah uh, we did we made a two two pop-ups with with fish and I'm gonna show you uh, when we have a when we have a fish there uh, let's go to the team and then we did completely reworked uh, multi-way pop-up and I can tell you it's one of the best pop-ups mm, not necessarily one of the best but definitely one that probably gonna make most money and most uh, boost of the win rate people play really poorly multi-way really bad play really really bad multi-way and to able to detect how they play because playing multi-way you need to be creative uh, sometimes uh, you're gonna do a lot of calling with hands like two pair on certain boards that are not great for your range on other boards that are good for your range you're gonna do, do a lot of donking you're gonna do a lot of check raising and definitely need to be a lot of creative because you, you will need to protect your range in the cases where even the, in the three-way spots you're gonna just have to do a lot of calling with really strong hands how can you be uncapped uh, in this situation or, or your range can be stronger uh, not not transparent so definitely uh, I felt that the multi-way pop-up needs a little bit of the rework let's go to the small bar versus big one just to see a guy what he's doing opening call here check here let's see his double barrel range okay uh, we have clip all with it then nevertheless check here this guy is on the nitty side so if he bets the river we're gonna be in trouble because our hand is nice as a call especially against the big bet on the turn now we're gonna have clip check back he bet with the ace king okay and we're gonna go 5.5 so uh, I'm gonna show you uh, with the fish we have big boy versus button small boy versus button out of position caller and we have link call out of position so this is for the fish we have a pop-up we click here we have a limping range from all position what they how much they fold versus raise what they called so we're gonna see which type of hands they limped called and we have everything post flop how they play folding versus c-bets with which hands they are calling c-bets against which size they are calling bets um, we have what there are betting versus miss c-bets check raising stats flop turn river and we have all the possible lines after check raise so we have check raise and a fault check raise and a call check raise and a three bet um, check raise flop and a bet check raise flop bet check fold check raise flop check fold turn so you're gonna see 100 percent strength in their check raising range how it how their check raising range keeps playing after check raising flop um, is he going to go with a check raise flop check raise turn double check raise stretch so going to have all the possible lines to see how they play so basically everything will be here so we're going to be how they play out of position versus delay and we're going to have that same in position in calling position uh you, you're going to identify the range 100 percent uh and definitely something i needed because yep i didn't allocate much time uh and effort to playing against them but it seems that definitely i missed a lot of chance to boost my win rate because i basically played what i'm basically a little blind against them i underestimated made them and it definitely did uh, for sure uh, made a bad a bad effect on my win rate because losing on 50k hands with two big wheels on eye poker yep it was like really really bad run on eye poker in this 200k hands that i played and i'm going to show you the, the the graph at the end of this session uh but still you know uh, whales on eye poker are like really big whales uh, a lot of players are like 80 50 
60 40 and a lot of them just regularly play one table every day so i'm <laughs> i did actually faced a, a familiar whales from time to time and i didn't and i didn't do much to i didn't do much to uh, give myself a pretty big edge on them um and that's a little bit problematic and i decided to to fix that and definitely i will now in future allocate more time to any possible opponents because now oh, this is really weird we're gonna trust them at the beginning without sample usually when fish bet pick especially pot plus on rivers most of them will just have the hand especially in this kind of boards where they would be needing to be really creative with their bluffs except the obvious hand like 8 10 and 7 10 which they probably have off but the actually range research show that with this type of hands they would bet like a half pot mostly and this size is pretty pretty strong so until we know more and looks passive also uh, until aggression i mean we can't say nothing about based on on basically beginning but generally looks also on the passive side yeah definitely we don't trust him in the beginning <laughs> so definitely now it, it will be much easier for me to play against them post slope uh, i will range them way better and i will have opportunity to know the range what much better and then i can see uh, do i want to uh, do i want to run big bluff or big fold or or anything like that uh, I, I, I will just have opportunity to see it okay we have the hand on the fifth table that you don't see and i think i'm gonna actually leave this table now hmm. pretty pretty strong it, it, it is four bet pot pretty strong board for a range and we made the fold okay like super strong board for a range uh, small blind versus big blind four bet pot we get the pot <coughs> uh, uh, we have a clear color raise uh, i was in my head in somewhere else so yeah thinking do i want to close the table or not okay um i think a lot of jack x he would also step on the flop i don't think he's calling like pocket fours or fives even that's possibility so we need to decide from what value we can get and i don't think we can get it he's gonna have also these queen x hands so i think it's better just to check and try to get value from his like 10x hands and his spade draw hands he's now wrapping uh queen x that he can have maybe he doesn't even step like a queen nine or a queen ten but we have clear call he didn't go pot he go to three quarters but you see like they will be pretty uh bed size uh, a lot of bed size means strength of their hand so we could also block river but with the blocking you need to go uh, if i'm thinking he will always check back a jack then that's definitely a nice spot for us to to block bet but if you don't think so and we think that he because fish like to stab middle pairs a lot and generally pocket pairs also they like to step so i think mostly the range is going to be like a pen uh of like ace 10 uh and spades because they like to stab these pairs so there's not much value to get with block and i think just better to check <coughs> Okay, we're gonna go with call here 
I'm gonna leave one table guys and I'm gonna leave <laughs> hold on hold on all, all the tables are good I'm uh, gonna leave this one and the table next and my I'm gonna add my fifth table okay uh, now I'm gonna talk about you a little what we've done with the multi-way um, with the triple check this is his triple check he only folds 20% okay do I want to now go with no bet he's not a big folder but we're gonna have hands like a 5x like a pocket 5 that we're not gonna step always on turn because he needs to check back a lot of over pairs on the deuce 4 or 6 so we're gonna have some 5x hands definitely in the range that we're not gonna step turn uh, okay and now guys I'm gonna show you the multi-way pop-up uh, we did completely reworked and uh, I really think this is highest TV of all because you're gonna just you're gonna like know exactly what your opponents are doing multi and how they're playing you're gonna e immediately uh, you're gonna immediately know every possible line uh, in every possible situations how they will play and I think really big EV comes from that so after I closing this table I'm gonna show you and we can talk about it uh, we're gonna go for it here uh, we're gonna do a little bit of calling I'm gonna call like 20% of my ace kings and I guess this guy maybe is not a bad idea look at this uh, Actually, let's gonna call. I'm calling around 20% of my ace kings, mostly for betting. We want to have it sometimes. Uh, we want to have it definitely. And he's using a really he, he needs to check range actually on the ace five four. Uh, momentum. And he's having a betting range. I'm gonna go big. I shouldn't, but I will. Three bet on table number three against a really needy guy. really really needy <clears throat> I will actually leave this table because this guy is short this guy only has 33 blinds so we will let leave that table Uh, this guy is a fish. Uh, neat. Neat. Uh, close to neat. Uh, close to neat. Probably neat. Probably neat. Probably a neat, okay. Bamiak, probably a fish. Okay. I 
after I leave here, I'm going to go deeply in a multi-rate pop-up. And guys, then I have some other news. Uh, in February, I didn't have a lot of time. I was finishing the update of the, of the, of the package. And it was a big update. We added uh, over a few hundred of new stats. And uh, I also did uh, listen to your ideas and I put it in. Uh, you did give a, a useful thoughts like uh, putting the one when bot one when bet river uh, stats and uh, like call efficiency stats on rivers uh, stats that when you put it together with the river bet pop up where you see complete their strategy in the rivers in uh, small pots medium pot big pots and super big pots when you add that it's gonna make your decisions uh, more accurate because you will see uh, generally how efficient they are. Uh, how good they value bet or they bluff heavy. So when it's lower sample, definitely stats will be nice there to put it and you give that ideas and we put it. Also you did give ideas about few lines that were missed that I didn't put in the hut. Uh, so now uh, I did actually put every, every possible line. So if you go to the other position caller pop up, we click big line versus button. We see a check raise, we're gonna have check raise fall, check raise call, check raise three bet, um, check raise flop, uh, bet turn, check raise flop, check fall turn, um, double check raise stats, basically all the possible lines are gonna be here, like Checker slope, bet check fold, checker slope, check fold, checker slope, check fold. So we're gonna dissect their range uh, pretty good in across all of these check raising and raising in position lines. And that's what we wanted to put uh, because I think this uh, this is like something it's not 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 too it's not too too often happening, but when it happens it's gonna be usually really important situations because you will want it to know uh, where you can make like big laydowns or big calls. And when you see like every possible line in their check raising and how they are continuing turns and rivers and um, like uh, how they're gonna play these turns, like double check raising stats, uh, check raise flop and check raise turn, Checker slope, checker turn. It's like double check raise, uh, not frequent enough, but you want to know is it over bluff, is it under bluffed, uh, and you want to know what your opponent is doing. So having it for range research is really nice to see which population tendencies are in that spot, which boards they are over bluffing with the double check raise, and generally in which situation double check raise is happening. So we add all possible lines in check raising, in raising in position, turns and rivers with check back ranges. Um, so you see a hand range in all of these situations. Um, we also uh, added in the tribute pots and we added in, in position, so we raising in position also. Uh, so definitely situations, in my opinion, that are highly important to be, to be put it. Um, Okay. Uh, and soon as I finally leave this table, and now I'm gonna leave it, we can get deeply into it. Ace Jack, we're gonna trip it. So I had a lot of work into in the February. I still try to play uh, a lot. Uh, I gave my best effort to be playing a lot, and uh, I also had uh, my dad, mom and dad, and sister, and her family were here with with me. And basically, I didn't have uh, much free time, so I didn't even had a time for making new videos. But now that's changed. Um, I'm gonna have a lot more time now. I'm alone and with my family, and 
uh, I'm making, I'm trying to make a big uh, uh, grind this month. Definitely big grind will be coming. Okay, let's see here. Uh, we don't see nothing. It's not bad hand. We're gonna barrel ace jack, ace ten. Uh, with ace jack, I think I want to have a spades, uh, and I don't want to have a club. And because I don't know him, I'm gonna check. Now he looks to me like a pocket pair, like pocket five sevens, or him like a six x. And let's see in the rear pop out to check check how much he falls. He actually defends this in a big pot. He actually falls a lot. Um, let's do it. Uh, we, we need to we need to wrap like a tens and jacks actually so I'm going to go like this on turn we're going to check a lot of queens a lot of jacks a lot of tens and I want to wrap that hand exactly that these hands I, I think that has most most it's going to be most credible if we play it like this and actually what helped me here, uh, we're going to go into the versus battery or pop-up and see how he generally play after check check turn. We actually see that he's not folding to 70 through 95. And we, if we see here what he called, we see that he's even calling the ace 10 against this size. <coughs> so he call ace high in this situation. Uh, but what is important here what is important here is if we go to the medium pots that's going to be mostly three bet pots we see that he is after check check turning position he's folding three out of three times so that indicates his check back range is pretty weak and we can maybe see that check versus mr and c bet okay we don't see a sample we have check versus me c bet we see that he's generally he check back with the ace jack here on the 559 five, so like i guess based when we connect all of these stats together it shows that his check back range is going to be weaker and we can attack that basically that was the whole story of the play and now we are four tables guys and now we can finally go deeply into everything okay jack 10 spot we're gonna call with the barrier of large draw and uh, I'm blocking every possible bluff on the turn we're gonna fold because queen is really connected to the middle position barreling range so we have a clear fold uh, okay he's checking back ace nine king guys that's never a good sign when somebody is betting 99% and check back ace king nine I usually what they're doing is these are middle middle strength hands uh, mostly gonna be middle strength hands so it's gonna be weak ASX king queen king jack type of hands and we're gonna attack that range mostly with our betting and he's not gonna have many of these backdoor, backdoor draws because he's gonna barrel a lot of them so only thing he only one he's gonna have is gonna be uh, like a king jack of clubs uh, we're gonna go over back and we're gonna go 25. so he's tributing uh, against the isolation we are called for betting with ace king let's see how he ex how he play against the call for bet as a tributor he showed once with the uh, kings okay Uh, we're gonna go 5.4 5.5 we're gonna go 10 percent 
I think it's nice size with this SPR. Our range is really strong. We're gonna have tens, jacks, queens, kings, aces, uh, ace jack suited, king jack suited, and he's gonna have a lot of. He's gonna have a lot of eights, nines, tens. Um, jacks are sometimes showing, so he's gonna show sometimes with jacks. He needs to check raise hand like a queen jack, jack ten sometimes. Uh, so definitely spot. Okay, we're gonna go with small bet on the turn. We are mostly gonna attack this under pairs to a jack and some floats with strength of our range, which is gonna be really strong. Okay. I'm gonna go with ten. Uh, let's see. Button versus small blind. Uh, he never fought tribute button versus small blind. Okay, interesting. This is interesting. Sixes we're gonna open, following everything else. <laughs> okay, guys, now I'm gonna show you the multi new multi way pop up. So, this is new multi way pop up. We have it for single race pot and triple pot. So, we just click here between two of these. And generally, we have their uh, calling range in the multi way. So, what we're gonna what the blinds will overcall, how the range will gonna look like. So, we're just gonna go here and see how wide there will be. Uh, I'm gonna shower fault here against 40 blinds. Uh, let's go against us. This is 8%. Uh, this is whatever I'm gonna fold this time. And check here, check here. So we have how the range looks like. So range from blinds. And when the isolation is happening, so this is when the fish is in how they're going to be, uh, we're just going to jam, we're not going to do anything else against their pot bet. So because the range is going to be different, it's like um, normal lower calls going to have, it's like have like a jack nine off, but against the ISO, the range is going to be, uh, range is going to be much different, it's going to be tighter, and also it's going to be different when Big blind is calling versus in position ISA, and when big blind is calling versus small blind ISA, you see when he has position on the isolator, his range is going to be wider. He can defend more hands. But when he's out of position, he's going to have tighter range. Uh, now we have four categories. We have how he plays as the as a multi way when he's a PFR in position. That means that he has position on every player. So he is in position and two or three other players are out of position. Um, we see how, the, how we can see what he's doing. We're gonna see like flop C bet. Uh, uh, we're gonna see turn C bet, river C bet, but we're gonna see like turn C bet multiway, river C bet multiway and river C bet heads up because situation gonna be changing when somebody bets multiway uh, we're gonna call pocket sevens. So situation is gonna be a lot different when somebody bets multi-way and he's heads up on turn. So you see, it's gonna be flop C bet, turn C bet heads up, and turn C bet multi-way. When it's turn C bet heads up, he will be generally putting more pressure. But when two player call C bet, he's gonna have, he's gonna need to be a little more, a little more aware of it and probably he need to be more honest. So that's why we're gonna see what he's doing in these situations. 
Uh, with sevens we can go either way. I'm going to check. A lot of king queen should be betting the flop. Even ace king and ace queen should be frequently betting the 10x boards, especially when they are disconnected. We're just going to check behind. We're not gonna. He was sitting out, but we're, we're just gonna check. Uh, usually, I give them like 10 seconds uh, until the time tank is activated. He had 6 7, okay. Okay, let's get back into the story. So, definitely, well, I don't have any. I didn't play with him much, so I decided to check river. There's a merits in betting river after triple check, definitely. So, but I don't know the guy, so that's that's the the. And he maybe timed out on turn, so his turn range is maybe not double double check. Maybe he wanted to bet, but he timed out and stuff like that. Okay, so we have flop C bet, and then we see a turn C bet multiway, river C bet multiway, and turn C bet multiway, river C bet heads up. Because it, that's all also different when you have three people and they both call flop, they both call turn. You have to be like a really savage to, to be bluffing a lot on rivers and you want to identify these savages. And when it's heads up, then you're okay, there's more chances of bluffing because you got rid of one one range. And then you have turn C bit heads up, reverse C bit heads up. Uh, so that is when the player in the multi pot is PFR, preflop raiser in position. Then you have single raise pot, multi way preflop is out of position. Preflop raiser is out of position. That completely changed the strategy, guys, uh, because now suddenly you only have a few boards that you're going to have a CBET range on. And many, many boards you need to check range. Uh, this is a situation when PFR opens and at least one player is calling uh, in position to that player. So he will be basically in sandwich or he will be out of position to two players, doesn't matter. But he will be out of position to at least one range. And when he's out of position to at least one range, no matter if that range is like reg or fish, if it's reg, you're going to have just even a lot of more checks. But if the fish, you're going to have a little more bets. But even against the fish, like 30, 40 percent of range in many boards, you need to check range. So definitely want to identify guys like this guy has 12% betting range. Uh, let's see, maybe something, some other guy that we have sample. Let's see this guy actually. Let's see this guy. So this guy doesn't care. He has 30% CBET range. He's going to bet ace four on the do 710, which is clear check range. This guy just going to not going to care. And he's going to bet with a big size that is Big mistake, he's using 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. So big bet, big bet, out of position, the guy doesn't care. He's just gonna bet that. So you don't want to identify these guys because if he's betting on the deuce 710, if I'm playing against him and I see this, when he's betting, I'm just having raise range and I'm never calling his bet because I'm just gonna construct my range like that, that I'm just gonna have raising range in position. So I'm gonna fold hands that I think that are not good enough and I'm gonna bluff and go with value with hands I think that are good enough uh, because he's doing something that is fundamentally wrong from strategy point and he's having a betting range here he's using the big size also so sup he's making a two big mistake mistakes he's doing and you definitely want to to immediately you immediately want to identify these guys that are doing that so we see like his flop C bet, flop C bet fold versus raise, flop C bet check fold, uh, how much he check fold. And immediately here you're going to see which type of hands he's check holding. Looks like he hold against the half pot 0.4 to 0.6, four out of four times uh, uh, out of position. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a sample because he probably folded on the river or turn, but definitely something to, to see. So flop check raise, uh, delay C bet. 
then we're gonna have turn civet multivate, turn reverse civet multivate, reverse civet heads up, turn civet heads up, reverse civet heads up. Uh, and this is the border position where we're gonna have a betting range. We're gonna have on these two brothers because we have a significant range advantage. The guy raises, we can click back or call, doesn't matter, I think. Until we know him, we'll go, we're gonna call. Now when he goes small, we're gonna go big. Uh, because generally I think now he's gonna have like a weak queen or queen can like a queen 10 queen 9 So we're gonna check or, or, or a draw he can still bet his draws like this But generally if he's gonna have a set he's not gonna bet it like this So we're gonna keep attacking him getting more money in the pot where we're gonna clearly be mostly ahead Okay, so definitely have the all You see everything how he plays a PFR we're gonna see the range, we're gonna see what they bet, what they barrel, uh, all of this stuff. And then we're gonna see how they play as a caller out of position from blinds, as a caller in position. Uh, we isolate, we can bet small on the king tree this. Um, on the turn we can check, bet small over option of five. I'm gonna go with a check because he looks aggressive so we can give him the chance to step. And on the river, what we're gonna do, generally I think we want to block now, we're gonna have a lot of hands like tens, jacks, pocket eights, all of these hands like a block and fish against the block knows to go a little bit crazy, so, and with the block we lose minimum against the king, we're gonna get maximum value from weaker hands, like it flows with the queen or pocket fives, so definitely way to go, we lose a minimum and that's great. Um, now we have a Multivate is a caller of the position, so you see like check fold, check all check fold, so fold to seabed, fold to turn seabed, fold to rear seabed, with all the check fold versus step, check raise versus step, check raise versus seabed, so check call versus seabed, you want to see is the guy uh, clever enough to put some value, some really strong hands into the calling range, you see against, he called with a seven, he didn't check raise trips, uh, you want to see generally how strain, how much strain they have and will they call a middle pair on the queen 5-7 against the bet against almost the pot this guy called with a 7-8 which is a fold so definitely it's gonna have you're gonna have a lot easier time to see okay he falls to see but really low he calls with the hands that are not clearly calls he calls against the size that is not is not a call so what is our adjustment against this guy guys against this guy we're just gonna bet exploitatively big with our big hands because the, the guy doesn't care, he's inelastic, he calls hands that are faults. On a small side he calls it against the pot, so against him we're gonna go in, uh, we're gonna go big and that's it. Then we see what he's stabbing on turns, stab river, uh, is he bluffing with the, with the flush draw, uh, the busted draws, generally check raise, turn, donk, I think donk is really really important, really really important and Okay, let's see here. Uh, we're gonna go. I'm not sure. I thought that was a big one here, I think. Yeah, probably did. Uh, let's just finish the hand and then we'll get back. <clears throat> I think we, get, we have to. I'm gonna call him. We're gonna have fives. We can we're gonna have hands like pocket fives, but now I'm thinking, do I want to turn them into the check raise immediately? Uh, let's go have. I'm thinking, would I turn fives into bluffs? The guy called with the sevens. I like the size that you used on the river. Really sick call against this guy in a multi. I mean, in a spot where 
not a lot of people will I actually now I'm not sure but I think that we want to just check race here like we're gonna have these sets I mean I I, I didn't want to even call here so I don't know I thought uh, well yeah but I didn't see this guy I mean this this crazy I thought that I'm opening against this guy guys so that that's what happened I didn't see it I thought that I thought I'm opening small blind against the big blind so definitely check raise check raise guys and we're gonna have warpers like this well, I don't mind now when when if, if I knew the situation is like this I don't mind how we played actually uh, but we should never ever go when he go two legs we go like three this is insanely bad but I didn't see it but I think generally if we called for example and we shouldn't be calling but if we did because of the fish and we had like I don't know pocket fives pocket deuces threes that I'm not doing but if I did uh, let's say just by for example I think we just want to raise here and turn our pocket fives into bluff basically and turn into the bluff like four five hence like ace four etc but I don't think we want to have call, call correct so it turned out good but we played it bad and it's because I'm showing you the pop-up but I think it, there's a lot of value here so we only have a few minutes left but definitely see like out of position from blinds you have complete strategy every possible lines check raise to delay fold versus delay check raise versus turn seabed bet river check raise versus turn seabed fold river so you're gonna see a strength of the range in every possible spot and you have that exam from for multi-way caller in position you're gonna see how much he folds flop turn which hands he calls flop calls turn so you're gonna see against which sides what he's calling so generally everything will be here uh, and that you have for tribute multi-way, you're going to have out of position as PFR, all lines, in position as PFR, out of position caller, in position as a caller. Um, you have all possible lines and definitely a really good tool. Especially like in these tribute pots, you're going to see how the range looks like is, do, do you gonna have a profitable spots to be bluffing and uh, this is the board which is specific yeah you poo, poo, poo. he's he's on the tighter side I'm gonna go I'm gonna go small but And the guy never check raised. Let's go to limit pop up to see if we have something. Uh, the thing is that we have to probably jam against the fish here. Blocking the jack 10. Uh, we need to fall here. It's 400 hands, he look, looks passive, but against small size, he can just raise hand like a, like a 9, 10, uh, 6, 7, like all of these hands that we are ahead of. Flush draws, top pairs, we did a small size, so we don't know how he will react. He didn't ever raise, but it's it's small sample to know that. Uh, we're gonna squeeze on table number two. So definitely this multi-way pop-up. I'm really, really, I did a lot of time to make it because I wanted to have complete story. Uh, and I know how important to me is this multi-way pots because you can make like sick bluff in these situations against the guys that you're gonna see. Okay, this guy's just gonna give too much credit in the multi-way spots. Um, you definitely want to identify these guys put a lot of pressure uh, because I'm going to show you later like I had in I started to play on eye poker uh, when I was uh, when my account of poker stars got frozen and they froze my account, account for basically almost a month and I had to play something somewhere and I get back to the eye poker 
and in the last few months guys I played 200k hands and I had the worst run of my life on iPoker and when I had similar but better run I had on Poker Stars in April a uh, really big downswing where I lost 62 buys in two weeks where I told you that I run like over 20 times kings to aces uh, three times deep on four bet pot I had a top set of kings where I run into the aces and they hit it on Turner River uh, 300 blinds deep plus so pretty sick run I lost 62 buy-ins in two weeks on stars and I still finished the year with 9 BBs last uh, but that downswing was like really big and I thought it was the big downswing in my life ever I saw and I put my graph on the detoxic when they made a video about uh, how uh, bankroll management you need to 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 have when uh, when they said like if you're four big four big bs winner you're basically uh, risk of ruin is less than one percent for 50 binds and i clearly showed them that's not the case because i had a, such a big downswing where i lost 62 binds in two weeks <laughs> so it's insane and i thought it's the biggest downswing of my life i thought I'm gonna just fold here. I don't know what he's wrapping, but he's pretty passive. He can check behind the flush draw guys and or straight induces and I'm just gonna fold. So definitely I thought this was the big downswing of my life and it was. I mean such a big setups and I also run uh, I think fifteen times AK Ace King suited cut versus in the in steel positions, cut versus button, small versus button, big blind versus button, smaller versus big blind. Over 15 times, uh, Ace King suited to uh, directly aces and lost every single one of them. And when I had uh, aces against Ace King, I lost two times uh, against Ace King off. So it was pretty disgusting run, uh, really disgusting. And uh, I thought that's like the worst that can happen. And then I started to play on eye poker, um, and you s just think. The worst run that that, I, that the run on stars that I had that I lost 62 binds, but the thing is that they are a lot uh, weaker than stars regs and generally there are not a lot of you see on stars I have like a 10 players that have top reg label on around eight nine maybe ten eight probably around eight uh, really good regs and on 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 uh, on eye poker there is no there's zero of them i didn't give them to nobody because there are just not no any top rank here so much stronger ranks are on stars um, and even in downswing worse than i had on on stars and this was a lot worse because such a sick hands i didn't see <laughs> i didn't even uh yeah, this coolers preflop happened like same on the stars, insanely a lot. But like these sick hands where they just bluff me on the turn with a gut shot, and where, where I have the nuts and they hit the the nuts on the river, that was like like pff, insanely tilting. Uh, it's called this call. Uh, so it, that is insanely tilting, and it lasted like almost two hundred k hands, and it, I mean it's still. It's getting better but still kind of still kind of terrible still kind of terrible uh, this is really strong hands for our range we're gonna have now a lot of we have six eight off in the range we have three six suited uh, we have a lot of four five five seven so definitely strong strong hand for our we're not gonna we're just gonna bet like this okay and I thought, guys, that's the worst that can happen. And then I got an eye poker and yeah, it lasted. Now it's 200K hands. Now it's getting better in the last like two weeks. It's getting better. But the thing is, even on that like worst downswing that I had on stars, that was the worst un uh, until ever in my, in, in, since I started playing poker, I didn't lose. <laughs> I was actually not losing. So, so that was like, in such a big down, such a insanely hands, I didn't lose. And I was down, I think, like a few Ks, but 
in the in the in the in the worst but still i mean on 200k hands that was nothing and now we're starting to winning and now it's i think now i also i start again without you know without read without sample so it was a lot tougher and every beginning when i ever start something it's always like that so we're gonna continue after we see here so we're gonna bet one fourth give me the um what one fourth his range cut off versus button uh this guy is on a tighter side okay Actually, I'm gonna go and give up with the ace queen. The guy is folding 67%, and based on our image and his thickness, he's just gonna call off here. So I, I would bluff here like 9, 10, 8, 9, 7, 8, 6, 7, but I'm not gonna bluff ace queen. Especially having heart, it sucks because now we're blocking the actual heads that he's gonna fold and turn. So generally, I would be bluffing everything. To this side, we have to call me screen. On river, but I'm not gonna bluff this combo of a screen uh, because the guy's not. F uh, he's we are basically blocking his only floats from the flop, and we have a bad image. Uh, we are bad imagers. Uh, people see us if you are part of my discord group you <laughs> i posted a few hands in last few hands a day in last month and uh, you could see <laughs> insane how how they light call me and i, I immediately recognize this is not going to be the spot that is profitable to yes king is insane because now we all have all of these over pairs that he's going to be kept to pocket dates probably we are uncapped but the thing is against player like us they are gonna just defend all of these hands you are blocking the folds the only flaws that he's gonna have so yes i'm not gonna bluff my screen but i'm gonna bluff 85 percent of my range and i'm gonna balance that i'm gonna sometimes check a king and the pocket aces and i think that's gonna be okay so definitely spot where i know from my experience if i'm going to the bad bad shop it's going to be called with we're going to be called pretty light people are not going to fold the fool they know okay he's just going to use this with all the things so yes i'm going to put a lot of pressure having seven eight six seven blocking like sixes seven eights nine ten this is the type of hands i'm going to bluff off occasionally queen nine jack nine queen ten this type of hands but with a screen that would be meaning that i'm bluffing all my range and if i'm bluffing all my range and we have a bad image where they we're going to be calling called a lot lighter than other people so definitely immediately recognize this is not the spot we want to be this is not the player uh, that's going to go fold against us When the show on 28, yeah, he folds a lot, but I decided just to, to give up. Yeah, we give up that hand, but I think the most important thing there is the most important thing there is to. Uh, I miss the size. The size should be uh, one fourth, and our hand is not the C. But I thought we are one one on one against the small blind range, which is going to be really bad on the A screen three, and he's not going to have ability to do anything about it. But in a multi way, we shouldn't be betting this the, this hand ever. So mistake. I didn't see it. I'm gonna go one fourth, king nine three. Uh, let's go to the small bar versus big line. So against our size, he needs to call a lot more than thirteen thirteen percent of range. And 
now we're thinking do we want to uh, no against him i was just going to go with barreling our hand to polar size i'm betting small on the king use four got raised This is our friend with 5-6, if you remember, where he raised immediately against small bet. Mm -hmm. Now we're just gonna bet, I'm just thinking this side. I'm gonna go like 18. Check here. Okay, we need to orbit or orbit like this. I don't have a clear call here. Pretty insane bluff, but it's like how they are bluffing fish. He didn't go all in, he go with the 2x on the river. He raised with nothing, check on I think he would bet any decent king. And when he bet like this, he raised, he doesn't track basically anything. Because fish are not like checking back pocket force that he raised the flop on the five now. When the flags are here, possibility of straight, he's just gonna barrel all of it. And we're just gonna check on 5 3, 2 4 5. And check again. I don't like this. Let's see his triple checks. How look, look at his check, check, check. Bet is only sixteen percent. He did bluff with pocket sevens because hits. They are now counterfeited, but generally not. Not a great spot. He's basically saying he has a 10. This is the size for 10. So that he did bet bigger with, with a flush. That was enough flush. Hmm. Let's see the rear pop up after checks how his half pot is doing. Okay, we're gonna call it. We see some bluffs there. So we're gonna call it. But he wrapped exactly what he had small 10 medium 10 okay i guess this type of players it's like when when you see when you see this guys check 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 bet 16 percent that means he is not attacking the purely kept range of two checks in, in position so that means he will generally under bluffed this spot and his size is also super Super not bluffy because they're not bluffing half pot in this situation. I don't know why I call, but really bad call. Like a super bad call. Super super bad call. Now let's see what happened here. Pocket tens, pocket queens. Let's see how it had played. The guy is tricky called with queens. This guy's betting, you see, like you want to identify free for money here. Because if I had pocket queens and I trapped and he bet, I would immediately raise it because he he should be having a check range, especially on pair boards, because pair boards are really favorable for the blinds and especially fish because they are calling wider, so they're gonna have a lot of trips in the range. When he doesn't care about that, then we're starting to raising it up to just there's a two things you can do first we are attacking with raising that's the first thing and second is attacking his checks heavily attack his checks there's the two things we want to do against these players okay 
Table number one, five, seven. Oh, let me, I even have a reads about this guy. Let's see what they're saying. Hm. Yep. I deserve a slap to call that against this guy. I mean, uh, I'm gonna bet small. I deserve a slap. Okay, let's see. Well, the middle position versus God. All right, this is not good. This guy has even ace king in the range. So his calling range, guys, would be like pocket sevens here. Mm, pocket sevens plus. Let's go half pot. The good news is that he doesn't have except the king queen of diamonds he doesn't have any flush that's the good thing uh, he has an ace here he's just gonna jam guys we're just gonna jam we're gonna have king queen off in the range he's not gonna have so we're gonna have king queen off we're gonna have some against him i will have some king jack off so yeah definitely we want to attack an asex region and the fact that we have six seven suited in the range we have nine ten suited we're gonna have some king nine suited so we're gonna have a lot more flushes than he's gonna have and we want to attack attack a range without without basically without a flush except the king queen of diamonds with our blockers we are blocking king jack and we are blocking king jack and queen jack suited so he's basically without a flush so we can jam ace king for example Especially if we have King of Diamond. I mean, that's a clear jam. Uh, check on the 7, 8, 8. He goes with... Uh, he should be betting one third or half. He goes a little more polar. He basically saying to us that he has an 8. We are blocking a seven and then I think he's using with the seven with that size. So he's gonna still have some six X hands, like six, nine, five, six, four, six. Mm, we're just gonna go block. We're gonna go block. Nine, 10, he can have. Pocket trees, he stabbed with trees, okay. I even thought like, okay, pocket trees. I just, I just don't, don't like the size of trees. I think the trees should be clearly in the one third size. But maybe he has just one side, I don't know. Looks bad, but I don't know, maybe it's, maybe he has only one size, we don't know. The guy looks bad. I'm gonna put him bad rank. You see, like he called with pocket sevens in this situation where we had uh, ace five. It was a fish multi way pot. Uh, we called his check raise. I mean, we look insanely strong. He just like snap called with sevens. And when fish called all in, I mean, definitely bad. Weak, weak passive bad. Around nine, so like he's squeezing nine percent against uh, UTG. Uh, it's gonna be more uh, because the fish is in. 
So now we need to want to do, do if we want to go with this or not. I'm gonna go with small, really small for cold for a bit. Because if he's having against UTG 9% normal against a fish that will be against a fish that will be um, 12, 13%, he's gonna have a jack of king queen up there. So this small size, I think it fits, feels okay. And we're gonna trip it here. And uh, we're gonna block here. Bet here and go for it. Check rear. We are following this combo. Now we're gonna call with the with the spade. Ace king with the king of spades is not calling. But our combo face king. Well, it's kind of weird though, so like it's not like a small board that he's gonna jam like nines and tens. And our hand is He's jamming a set like in a four bit pot, so I think he queen is his jamming. So this looks super weird to me. And I'm blocking his jack and ace king. I think actually this is a call, guys. I think this is actually a call. We are blocking the the, the hands like ace jack suited and king jack, so he's gonna call against this size always. Uh, The problem is that this guy just jammed, check jammed on queen jack five against small bet against one fold. He jammed with the jacks, so it's possibility he's gonna just jam pocket dates, maybe even jacks. The thing is, we don't know what he's gonna do with nines and tens. He just jammed or fold in these situations, so our hand would be terrible if he's not. You see, he, would, he, he should be calling jacks. He should be calling jacks to protect nines and tens. <coughs> but even some nines and tens can jam. The thing is, he can jam with nines and tens. But then our hand is becoming a bad. GTO calls you the king of spades. And this combo of blocking Ace Jack and King Jack is good. I actually think we should call. Just because I don't feel this guy is jamming. Let me see his check raise and trap pot just to see. It's possible, guys. He's like check raising sevens on the 3 5 fade, check raising. Yeah, possible he jams nines, tens. Then it's whatever, but. Still a lot of larger hit that he's gonna jam. Mm. He can also have the hand like 9 10 in the range, queen 10 of diamonds type. And all of this like ace 4, ace 5 of spades, king 10, king queen, queen 10. I think the crucial is what he's gonna do with the with the nines and tens there. If he's never jamming this, then I feel like our hand is great call. Not sure still. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But great combo to block a lot of ways, right? I lost too much time. I was actually, guys, more, a lot more closer to, to, to calling it. He opens only nine, nine, 19%, so I'm just gonna fold this nine. Okay. Half pot with six, seven, let's go.
half point. This type of boards you want to bet a lot of half and you're small better against the bat and the range is linear. So I would go, I wouldn't use much. Big man versus button, I would have some one third, but uh, small man versus button because our range is more linear. We are more mergy, so a lot of sixes, sevens, eights plus in the, in the range. So I would go bigger. Half, two thirds seems okay. Hmm. Still thinking about it. Ace king. Let me see reads that I have. I didn't even check that those. Yeah. Now when I see it, he just love loves to 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 jam. A really strong hands, so he can jam like a king jack, queen jack there. Uh, jack ten. Mm, and knights and tens. So not looking too great. But even against these hands we have the equity. And when we when we mix it all together, it's just blocking his strongest jack X are really I think enough for us to get call to call it off. Let's see what happened here. Uh sevens against three five. Uh, check on table number two. Hmm. Check. Hmm. Let's see here what to do. Will he attack? Triple check. King five. You see, like he has forty four percent. Check to check step forty four. So you see, like he double checked flop and turn uh, behind on the big blind with the king ten. He did bet really small with. Uh, he bet really really small with, in position with absolute trash king seven, one third in position. So he, block bet in position, which is something, you should be almost never doing. Uh, betting ranges in position are polarized just by nature, because, you have the ability, uh, blocking means mostly getting to showdown cheap in runouts that are not uh, favorable for other position but he still has a lot of hands that can get weighted and in position that concept is not existing because we check you realize equity so generally betting ranges in position are polarized and basically the worst the, the smaller size you're going to use is half pot and mostly you're going to use two-thirds plus so definitely something to, to keep in mind. I'm gonna go with this. Uh, this is his tribute. This guy is tributing in position decent amount of time. King gauge x7, let's see what happened. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're gonna go to it 7.5 called jacks called pocket tens cut versus button he called tens tens are mostly four but jacks are mostly four but so his call range will probably be stronger let's see his four bet range it's like he's still four betting a lot Calling to jam a lot. That means he's just over bluffing with four bets. So he's calling tens and jacks, but he is still four betting a lot. So he's gonna four bet more bluffs than we do. Okay, we're gonna go one third on five five ten. 
Good looking cave guy. Suited. So I would say his range. His range. Probably like opening 19%. Call defense. Okay. So he's going to probably be around like fives plus. Fives through jacks. Jacks probably check raising it a lot, but he didn't check raise at all. So maybe he has it in call range. Run small. Turn. Pair board. Turn. Like one trade is okay. We didn't see a check raise on the flop, so that means he can have still some 9-10, jack-10 hands, queen-10. He might have a lot of combos, but he can have it. Now it's question here. Fall to see and turn 75%, guys. Are you just gonna bet a river? And I would have also 10x in this size. I think on turn, what one third does is suddenly what he's gonna do with pocket sevens, pocket eights, pocket sixes. We put these hands in top spot. If we bet bigger, he can he will have much easier time with that these hands. Also hands like ace jack of clubs that floated ace queen. He needs to call it. So nice size. And we're gonna mix in 10x for sure. 10x we're gonna mix there. The good news is that we're gonna have more 10x than he does because I'm true betting like 9 10 suited, jack 10 suited, queen 10 suited, king 10 suited, ace 10 suited. He's not calling all of this, he's for betting some of it, probably for betting king 10, ace 10 probably also. We see a high for that frequencies. So he could have these hands. Um, so he's gonna have less trips and he's gonna check raise it on the flop or on the turn a lot against our small size. So definitely a nice spot for us. Uh, we're gonna trip it queen six suited, big one versus button, polarized range. This is by my method of randomization. We are tributing this now. Our range looks like we have a7, ace off, 8, ace9 off, ace10 off, king10, king9, jack10, queen10 off, a lot of off combos, and suited combinations of king3 suited plus, queen3 suited, and jack3 suited plus, suited connectors on gappers and 3 gappers, so that's how our range polarized looks like. Uh, check calling on the flop. This is his check calling range, we see a king jack off in the range, which, hmm, let me see here, how did he call this, king jack off, he called it, right, on button, so he didn't call it on cutoff, and there were fish in it, Pretty weird, but king queen off isn't his range for sure. Or king ten suited. I don't see many, many hands except the jack ten and nine ten that are stabbing this flop with that size. If he did step ace ten, he probably will continue it on turn. Step flop that turn. I think he would bet it for sure. 
but even like Jack 10 can bet small and check behind the river. Hmm. A screen, okay. On the river, I would probably call just because I don't see, I see high step bet, step flop bet turn. I see it high and against this guy, I will have more linear bit line range. Um, okay, I don't need to have it. I just baited his falling 41% in position. This guy's having over bet range, so he's gonna just. Uh, I'm gonna go block river, guys, or check. A lot of four, seven, eights in the range. Five, six, X. Jack X wants to block, but I'm gonna go with a check. He's gonna have a lot of 10 X also, better checking behind. Check behind with a king queen, pretty interesting best also. He checked with a king queen, he didn't or better king queen on 10. Pretty interesting, okay. One third here. I like it sometimes you want to have a uh, really equity draw and check back range. So I would much rather check back king queen than hand like a queen eight, for example, or seven eight or eight nine. So he played it good. Uh, we're gonna call here with the screen, mixing three bet and call on the button. Okay, let's see how did this guy gets that he okay. Check behind. Five X three boy boy why did this? And this guy calls with queen jack. Let's go a little bigger on table number two. Let's see his range. I'm gonna go small here on this board with our hand. And we are 150 deep. Checking is okay also. We go with raising. Let's see what his bed range looks like. I, I would say probably against our size can go king jack, king queen. We are deeper, maybe king queen. Bluffs can be. I think king queen jack is mostly calling. Uh, bluffs. I mean, he can also bluff raise like ace queen. He raised only with the queens in position. Yeah, we're gonna fold turn. Uh, but we don't know, you see, like we don't know if he's raising queen jack. But now he's just basically wrapping a two pair plus at this point. And with 10, I mean with 10, we block tens, we block in ten suited. So he's only stuck with the diamonds. It's already range like sevens. Is he raising ace queen? Would he bet it on turn? That's also a question. For example, like ace queen and ace jack with the with the, with the blocker, what he would play. In general, I see this type of opponents will just check it back but the thing is we don't know about this player what what this player is going to do we don't know <clears throat> i 
when we are deeper the strategy are gonna change a little bit um, with some hands in some situations you're gonna go really small like one for one fifth one fourth a lot and then on some situations you're gonna go like super big and play even four stacks with over pairs with uh, going super big on the flop like 70 percent going super big on turns and showing the reverse so to me it changes based on the board structure on the board structure where i'm uh, i'm gonna have nuts advantage and they're more static i'm gonna go a lot of lot a lot with bigger sizes and on more dynamic boards we go a lot of small sizes even when we have the range advantage it doesn't matter because turn can ha change uh nuts advantage significantly in these situations then like for example on king 10 7 it has a lot of sense to go smaller than bigger than uh, for example on king 9 4 uh when we are deeper because turn there on king 9 4 or king 8 3 uh the turns gonna be uh Go for the river. Uh, turn is gonna be turn is gonna be on king 10 7 to tone. You're gonna get turn like jack, uh, queen, ace, uh, third flush. Like many things will change, shift the nuts advantage from one range to another range, and you don't want to bet big because of that. Um, He's the lazy that here is pretty strange. Let's go pattern versus big blind delay. Check behind range, let's see. Ah, his check behind range is pretty weak. Uh, well, we can check raise, but I don't want to without the dynamic. He's never check, checking back a flush. We see that from check behind range, so it's not bad to check raise. Let's see what I have on him. Yeah, this guy will not gonna believe us very much. Okay. Check all the flop on this 5-7. On this 5-7, we're gonna check all the faces, kings. A lot of this type of hands. We're gonna check call. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of checks. We're gonna bet our eights, nines, tens type of hands. We're gonna do a lot of one third and a little bit of over bet size on the flop is also okay. I'm gonna he's saying he has a seven. I think he credibly reps it. He's really not yeah, he's super passive. You're just gonna believe him. Queen seven, okay. I didn't I don't know if you did get the point, but the whole point is where when you're deeper, when you're playing two hundred blinds in situations like you're gonna have the board will be like six or six nine ten or five nine ten to tone like seven ten jack to tone if you go super big with your or pairs that <laughs> kind of want to get protection and value and stuff but like turns gonna be eight nine third color uh third flush uh so a lot of turns will significantly impact in, in into situations of nuts advantage to one range to another range and when that happens when this like huge shift suddenly all pairs come from the like almost the nuts like all pair almost the nuts on uh jack nine six for example suddenly it it comes to be a uh, check fold on turn so you don't want to allocate a lot of money immediately in the flop so that has sense to go with small bets uh, that's why I did going small with, with our hand. Our hand can go with the check also. Yep, you see, I didn't uh, make a video for over a month and now I'm late, guys. Four tables and I'm losing it. I don't know what to say. I, I'm doing a lot of thinking. Mm, you see, like how you lose a routine if you don't do something very, very often. So yeah, I need to fix that routine. Okay, this looks strange when he bets and now checks, he needs to block a lot. So I'm thinking, um, do we have value here? I think with stronger seven, yes. 
I don't need to check it. I think he's gonna check like every seven. He check with green, okay. I was thinking, do I need to value bet? No, we don't need to value bet. We're gonna check race here. Okay, let's see a side. I think I like this size. This guy doesn't bet a lot. He's so he's even is polarized. So he's he's gonna be like, especially when he calls this a check raise, it's gonna be a lot of orpers. And yeah, he's opening fourteen percent, so maybe Ace Five suited. That's it. That's calling with check raise. When the deuce come, we're gonna basically check eighty percent plus. We can check range because it's significantly damaging our uh, value region. I like double check raise, but I want to know the guy's good. I, 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 this is the perfect spot for a double check raise. Um, I'm not going to do it against this guy until I know more about him. I see just, just that he's tight and that's it. I want to know more, I want to know how he plays turns and rivers, have more dynamics between him, because this kind of play against needs can go right, we can make them fold, uh, if they, if the, we played only 900 hands, so I don't have a bad image against him, I didn't do any shit, so I think we can credibly maybe get credit for a double check raise, for having, let's say 4-5 or pocket trees. Uh, because yes, like four or five just want to double check raise, pocket six is if we check raise it now, I think we have fish on the big one we're gonna call. Uh, like pocket six now can trap, uh, because now we want to some, have some traps. Um, yeah, four or five just always uh, wants to double check raise, so we want to have some bluffs like this. And if I'm check raising turn, I need to jam river because he is now when he face this double check raise, he will think, okay, I bet small, maybe he's check raising because I bet small. And this is really bad. Multi ray. Um, yeah, you see, like I'm I'm only raising or 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 he's betting three eight five. I'm just gonna raise or fold and we're gonna go with pocket sevens. And raise it and turn it into multi street bluff basically. Okay. 7.5. This is my normal tribute size. He called against us ace eight off. Queen ten off, so his range is gonna be wider. Going one fourth. This guy is sticky. He's gonna call turn with a queen jack type of hands with ace 10 so definitely double barreling and i'm actually going pot yep. now we are taking his pocket fours five sixes floats that he's gonna have to fold now Holding everything. And guys, I didn't say to you, but in last two months, I learned the most in my life. I studied every day and I also, because of this da big downswing, uh, you know, people ask me how you go through downswings. Uh, and actually the downswing, what it does to me that I, start doubting I, st I just immediately start maybe i'm just not good guys i'm maybe just had like super good runs and i'm i'm terrible because dancing starts to make you doubt are you any good and to anybody every dancing i had in my life it's always the same and when i start to doubt i start to work hard and i immediately started to work even first time in my life i started to work during the day so during the day when i had a free time when my my child was going to sleep or something like that i was going through solar and practicing uh, any sports that i was uh, not 100 percent sure what to do 
to see uh, mistakes that I did, why I did them, if I thought it was mistakes, node lock it, stuff like that. So definitely I put a lot of work and I feel the best in my life. I feel that I'm now the best player I, I have ever been. Um, so in one way, it's good uh, when you, when, I mean, those things are hard, but if you, mostly if you do it right, you're going to be better when you go out of it. So definitely I worked a lot and I feel better than ever. Uh, we're going to bet now, we're going to go like three. We're going to rep like weak ace, king, jack type of hand. We're going to bet one third here. Uh, this guy is on a tighter side, but he's going to call. Oh, he called eight and off, so forget it. He's going to be... He's opening 16%, but when you see that in this 16%, he, he opened the eight and off, this 16% doesn't mean shit, so it can be 50%. So, okay. So first time in my life I worked during the day. Um, and yep, I feel better than ever. And I had big plans for this year. Uh, I plan also, you, you were asking me about the moving uh, up in stakes. Uh, last year I started to play 500 on Super Sport. And I mixed here uh, 200 and 400 on iPoker. Uh, I mix it. Usually I don't like to mix limits. That's something I hate. So my bankroll management is really nitty. So when I come to, to 300 binds for limit, then I'm perfectly capable of playing without any stress on it. And I don't like mixing limits. That's the reason. But on iPoker, because they are a lot weaker than I start, I decide, okay, I'm going to mix limits. Uh, but when you're in downswing, that's usually not going to turn out uh, to be... Uh, great, but yeah, I did mix it, uh, but now I just want to go and make a really uh, full grind, uh, do a lot of studying and playing, and this month is perfect for that, so I'm going to try to make more videos and try to move up, guys, that's the plan for this year, uh, we started really bad, but we did get out of it, um, but maybe that's good uh, because I did learn really a lot and that's the, the main thing. And I'm going to talk about when we come to spots, I'm going to give you some cool things that I didn't know before that I learned. So definitely it's going to be fun also for you. Uh, and it's time to get back, guys. We have such many debts to collect. They owe us many nerves, many... Uh, like, we need to crush the shit out of these guys because they deserve to get crushed. I see such a stupid play. Everybody here, like, Reg has calling range on small line. He calls, like, 4.3% against any position 3.6. So, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to go over bet. I'm just going to go uh, normal normal size because a lot of, of our range just want to bet like this. Like, even 9x can bet like this. So... with the seven okay so we have many depths to collect um, I'm selected for the new rakeback program uh, I didn't contact stars I thought that I will get it automatically but at, uh, when I when the guys from discord told me you have still chance then you're not you're not the in the new program then I contact them and they gave me the new program uh, new rakeback system, uh, so I will probably mix also poker stars a little bit, but I just can't live now, you know, um, I was like 35 by inch below VV, uh, such a sick run when, <laughs> that I, such a sick setup, schoolers, and I think it's time to get it back, 200k hands, hands, that was happening every day, uh, now I just can't live, I have this urge to, because, you see, like, I played with such a weak Rex heads up, and I couldn't do shit, like, they were hitting miracle hands, playing such a bad, like, calling the 100% faults, uh, playing such a bad poker and getting it, and I, I mean, I'm playing everybody, and I, and they actually played me, like, every night I play with other guy, six table heads up, that never happened to me, like, on stars, uh, 
you have few guys that are playing but they're like top ranks and they are battling they want to 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 show up muscle and we, we and rank battles are, are happening but here like everybody played me like they were super ha super happily to play me and i couldn't do shit and heads up is my best game i bet i'm come from heads up and i basically play heads up the best out of all formats that i play and i couldn't do nothing about it <laughs> just killing me and that was embarrassing like every day uh now when the things are a little more normal now they are usually don't playing anymore uh last two weeks nobody to play um but now i want them to play now when the run is little normal i'm still basically every session uh, around ev a little below ev and the sessions like i had i don't know 50 sessions 47 are below ev um so now when the run is little more normalized i'm still not not in a uh, in a heater and i'm waiting for that I, I just can't leave i just want to crush them heavily and if you stick with me guys we can watch that happening because that will happen i just need to make it happen because you you, you know how the people sue for uh, some guy uh, got burned from hot coffee and he sue 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 i don't know which which was the firm that he sued because he he did uh, get burned on his tongue when he was drinking the, the, the hot hot coffee and he wanted to get uh, paid for his mental uh, and like soul uh, emotions that go, that got hurt so that's that's exactly what I want to do I want to get paid for all the uh, pain I need to go through this month um, all the doubts all the bad nights of sleep uh, even I have to be honest, I didn't have many bad nights of sleep. I only sleep bad when I play play bad, and most of the times I did play really good, so I I ha didn't have trouble getting to sleep. But let's say it like that, so to give more drama about it. Uh, but definitely, I just I mean <laughs> the opponents are. You see, you you'll see today like it's uncomparable to stars. I would say like stars NL one hundred and stars is way stronger than NL two hundred here, right? I can even guarantee that. Um, so having to lose day by day against these guys is mentally super exhausting and we need to, to go through that. And now I want to pay that. I want to to collect my debts. You know, every day comes a day where you're gonna collect. The day, that day will come in anything. And I think now it's time for me to collect everything and i'm looking forward to that so i just can't leave right now even yep this program on stars is way better now i uh, now on stars i have a better deal um 50 percent of rake back directly if you if you play regular tables and super promotions leaderboard and stuff like that so it's gonna be more around 60 plus leaderboard um around 60% of rake back so that is significantly more than I'm gonna have here I can I have here around 40 to 43 45 because I also pay on red star when you make a withdrawal you play you pay uh, I think 5% out of all uh, amount and I'm gonna go don donkey in the turn Let's see how this guy reacts to dogs. Uh, let me see first donk. Uh, we don't know. He just called donk with king seven. Okay, he had a gut shot. He just called. Okay. Three bet table number four. So guys, it's go time. It's time to grind, time to play. Uh, I'm super excited and it was pretty tough because I also didn't have a, a lot. I, I wanted, when when the, the swing is happening, I wanted to play a lot more than I could, but my family was here. I wanted to spend time with them. I didn't see them a lot. Um, so I was torn apart, you know, real bad run on poker then you don't have uh, opportunity to to 
to play these guys uh, often is is that that you wanted to to just get that run out of the system so all in all it was uh, okay let's put it here so all in all i was torn apart from here to here and i need to finish the update uh, I just didn't have time to put to make a videos for you, but that will change. I also think about do I want to make a stream? So if you like this video, if you give decent amount of likes, let's say, I, I don't know. I will see if it's decent. I'm not going to give you the number, but if you like the videos, if you like the content, if you like the things that I'm speaking about, like the video. And if I see that the video is well received, I'm gonna make a live stream and we can talk and we can talk and play check back with it with a set great you see like how i was i'm completely out of it one month i didn't make a video and stream and suddenly i don't know i'm like i'm doing it for the first time guys i'm almost shaking it seems okay and i'm gonna go have yeah, but there's such so, uh, there's so many things I wanted to say, and also I I apologize uh, on the beginning of the video if uh, if the presenting of the pop ups of the of my HUD and the things that we did in the update if it's uh, boring to you or or something the guys from the Discord I promise them uh, that I will make it uh, that I will speak about the new update what happened and basically that's why. And yeah, I also did want to show because we did a lot of effort and uh, I also think that I would say this in today's games, the biggest edge you get from from today's games, where is the like biggest opportunity to boost the win rate, I would say the number one is multi pots. So if you see the complete ranges and complete strategy in multi pots, you have done a lot of, uh, we can dunk here, we can dunk here, the guy's betting. Uh, we can dunk actually. We're gonna dunk. Uh, we're gonna bet third. And we need to play the value also like this, guys. No? Not just like that our pocket eights wants to bet like this, but we need to bet like pocket fives like this, like nines, especially pocket nines. Oh, so this is big range small blind pop up for three bet pots. Basically betting range, or he'll bet range on four, four, five. He has a polarized range or not. We will see three hands, 18% general. I think it will be polarized now we want to see do we want to block or not let's go with the block of 10 percent on the river well, let's go for it now let's see his check he folded i want to see his seabed okay check flop i want to see seabed flop check turn Okay, he did only have a skiing. So we don't see any like top he top pair or pair hands, middle pair hands. We just see basically all cards. So that's immediately suggesting that his checkback range after receiving it in position is weaker. So I immediately like the block more. Queen check. Okay, I also have one one depth to say. Um, um, one of you asked me uh, about a few feature that I actually had before. Uh, it is a zoom option into to zoom into the tables. Um, I had it. And suddenly it's not working but i had it on my uh t on, on my keyboard when i click uh w a, -A s d 
I could change between uh, tables. Now it's not working, but if you think it's that important, I can make it work. I will contact somebody that knows what to do. I don't know. I tried to fix it, didn't succeed, but I'm suck at computers, so probably the problem is in me. So if you want to see that option, let me know in the comments and I will try to use it. But we have only four tables, guys. And here you see like action on all, across all the tables, table dynamics. I think just going to zoom into it, it's also, I don't know, I, I feel it's nice. It's, un, uh, it's not necessary, it's unnecessary. So, uh, wow, this is not, not great. So this guy is super tight, I'm just gonna follow the screen. I guess this guy is screen off. Tight fold, but he's not tributing polarized range. I, I, I screen is mixing four bet and call in these positions, but against this guy, when he has 5%, he's gonna be linear 5%. So four bet has more sense, but against him, I'm just gonna fold. Betting one third, see this guy is calling small blind. Oh, he has really wide range on the small blind. Like ace turn off, king jack off, queen turn off, tight. <coughs> okay, let's go with that. Let's see, this guy doesn't fold much to three bits. You see the stats are green and basically a lot of green is next to him. So when somebody, when something is green, it's telling us that the player is uh, more aggressive or more loose in that spot of the HUD uh, than the average of uh, average of regs on poker stars on mid stakes, but also then the GTO based on the GTO wizard, so the guy is more loose in many situations like check folding, calling versus C bets, for calling three bets, all is more loose and more aggressive than optimal. Generally he's not aggressive that much, but he is C betting more, barreling more, folding less, mm, mm, stickier a lot than GTO so definitely something to be aware of so I will mix we will do a little bit of eye poker and I'm thinking also about a, a challenge so we can track a progress to 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 move on the limits yes i have a really nitty bank bankroll management and i advise you to have the same because we were discussing on the our discord group because many videos and many like familiar guys are saying aggressive bankroll management and they say like 50 binds 70 binds even 30 binds and if they said in the detoxic poker that risk of ruin fi about four big blind winner on 100 with 50 binds is less than one percent and that's not sure for sure because i i paused them i lost in two weeks 62 binds and i'm over nine bbs winner on poker stars on 800k hands so if, if this happened to me it can happen to you, it can happen to everybody so definitely it's not uh like is like risk that they are that like they are uh saying no it's not low variance they don't we everybody don't understand the variance enough and uh, variance is much much brutal than we think that that is and it shouldn't be underestimated for sure <coughs> um on the term we're gonna go delay i'm gonna go to one third Let's see his check back range, but there's a small blind, check back range. 56% uh, is his check back range. You see that he check back king queen on the 5 3 3. Generally, I feel he's uh, based on his bet versus me C bet. I think it's value heavy. Yep, it's mergy, value heavy. So his check back range is going to be a lot, a lot weaker. Delay C bet on the turn, way to go, check range. Uh, it's not here is actually not check range but 
Jack of Hard Hand. On deck on ten, does Jack you actually want to have a betting range? Uh, but our hand is clear check, we're checking it, we're checking on turn, and on the river we're gonna go with block. And I'm gonna go small block, I think it's fine. Okay. So definitely they will say to you aggressive bankroll management, uh, but uh, I'm 100% sure and I'm playing poker for 13 years and I did go through a lot of it, through a lot of downswing, a lot of crazy runs, but for example, on stars, I lost in two weeks and I play really good. Uh, I, I lost 62 binds. That was last year in April, um, so before a year. Um, so definitely, and when I posted, I also posted my graph to them and say, okay, you're preaching about 50, 50 binds. I lost 62 binds in two weeks. It's like a few sessions, guys. How can you say it's impossible to, uh, like risk of ruin for 4BB winner? Like how much, how big of a difference you think is a 4BB winner and 9BB winner? Because it is a lot of difference. So if the 4BB winner has like less than 1% of zero, uh, less than 1% uh, of uh, chance of getting ruined, how much the 9BB winner has? It's gonna be a lot of less than that. And when I post them, uh, my graph, they said, if this graph is correct, that's the worst run we ever seen in, in, in uh, here. And they delete the graph, they delete the form, de delete the, their comment, because I wrote, okay, you can go into a smart hand and you can easily check my graph, e easy, easy. The point is that there's a lot of guys that are gonna say a lot of things and that's not necessarily means that things are true, even if they have a lot of sense in what they're saying because they there has a sense of their saying they won't say to you, you want to be um, trying to move up in stakes fast as possible, yes, but the point is that warrants can be brutal and I have an example in my group, the guys that are good and talented, this, uh, they just uh, had gone through brutal downswings and uh, they just played this aggressive bankroll management strategy and it didn't go well, it didn't go well. Yes, they, they after that going through these stake, stables and stakings but I was always, no, no, King Nine is open. Uh, I was always by myself. I never, I couldn't play for anybody's money. It's that just not something I could do. Uh, I started from zero from myself, always playing well, like 100% of, of myself, even in MTTs. I just, I have a friend that was with me a long time ago and we always played together. In a big series and I give him like 10% of my action just because we are friends I wouldn't usually do it so he he watched me play and we played together uh, talking about um, uh, hands after it and uh, you know sometimes when you play it's gonna be boring especially MTTs when you're playing so having a company is always nice also, when I stream, um, I, I did stream a little bit of entities like before one year. Uh, it's much more funner, but when you're when you're alone, it's gonna be uh, boring a lot of the times. It's gonna be boring, especially in this uh, starting phases of the tournament. So, but generally, I'm all having one one percent of me, and I never, uh, I would never be doing some staking because. You play for somebody's money and then you have these deals. I mean, some people can do it, but when you're getting in certain age and you're not a kid anymore and you have family, it feels to me not serious. It feels to me uh, that they're, I don't know, I just don't like it basically. And that's why I, I'm always, uh, I had, I, I always told you, you asked me why you didn't move up faster. Because I did crush every every field I played, uh, every site I played, and um, yeah, my answer was um, when I had this, I, I, I was suddenly having two small children's uh, situation where I need to uh, 
like my life turned 360s and I need to 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 do everything for my family uh, house car everything uh, take care and uh, take care of and that was on the first place and I didn't want to take any unnecessary risks risks so that was basically uh, beginning beginning of it and yeah uh, from the beginning I this had strictly rule of bank from management uh, because I knew if I can just have these six swings where I lost 60 binds when uh, we're gonna actually go barrel turn eight fives if I had these big swings definitely it's something that can happen and it's not very true and this guy is capable of folding an ace, but he's not going to fold like an ace queen. Uh, we just have to give up, guys. Uh, this would succeed, unfortunately. He wouldn't turn king eight into bluff. He would fold it. Uh, we need to go around the pot. <laughs> He's falling to double barrel 83% against us. So basically on the turn he's going to minimally have a good ace or two pair or better. Like a good ace, I mean like ace jack with diamond plus or ace 10 so definitely not a great spot but if the river was like especially going down because he's not gonna have this uh, he's not gonna have ace 9 off in the range at all or ace 8 off so um wherever like 9 or lower i'm bluffing the river because he's not gonna catch the like He's not gonna get like ace six or ace five or ace four, but he's gonna have ace ten, ace jack, ace queen. So all the lower one I would bluff still. But not pairing the ace. Even like this is under bluffed, so I feel maybe I would get credit. Because I feel it's super under bluffed, but I decided not. Super weird size here, super weird. Super, super weird. When this type of player is making it looks to me value heavy. It looks to me value heavy. I don't think he's gonna bluff like ace jack, queen jack, ace 10. But I think we are also, also too far in the range to fold it. Uh, he also did bluff something. To me, it looks like an ace king, but king queen, we just have to call it off. Because weak players play like that, super big size on the flop. But still, I don't know him, like 400 hands, I just can make a fold that is always calling. But this size to me immediately like smell like an ace is always king. Uh, but the run out is like that that we can get away out of the hand. <laughs> Unfortunately. If I had him like and we also have some bluffs that he did bluff with hand like a queen jack there, which without the blocker and stuff. To fold it, I need to have a lot, I need to know a lot more about him to be able to fold the hand that is called. I need to know way better in these positions. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we're gonna go with check raise. And I'm gonna go like this.
Oh, let's see his check quality range on the 568. We'll call against him. We have two weaker players on blinds. Check back your retreats. Calling with queens, which he played okay. So always good. With trees, we want to bluff like a diamonds, like a nine, seven, stuff like that. Again, the guy's betting in a spot where he shouldn't be betting. So he needs to check range here. We're gonna bet. We're gonna raise. We're not gonna call much. gonna call a stem so betting 78% guys but he's checking the king 8 deuce where he needs to bet range what, what do you think it's that when they play like this I have a check back range on the on the flop So I'll check everything, deuces, eight, king x, everything. And now we start to bet, start to bluff. We're gonna go pot. I'm uncapped, guys. I'm I'm I'm, I'm uncapped. I have. King nine suited, I have pocket deuces, I have pocket dates, I have everything. I'm uncapped because his strategy is on a bet range spot he's checking. So I'm checking back for my whole range because his play doesn't have any sense. So I want to be uncapped on turn because that strategy generally what happens when they check in a situation where when they need to bet range, they don't have much bluffs, but they have a lot of medium strength hands and traps, basically traps or medium strength hands and then we want to be uncapped and just check all all of our range and then start to betting, uh, we're going to jam ace king. And call here. Calling on the king with this four with the with the backdoors, and I'm gonna trip with this hand. I'm calling on turn. I was close to folding. If I had a better uh, sample. I, I could get away with it, king queen guys. And just because my experience, when they bet big on the king xx and go smaller on turn and jamming to jam the river, um, yeah, this type of profile like this type of profile will will call knights. Then we are a mix in between tributing and calling when our two weaker players. I tend to more calls. Nice, we're still calling here. He uses the perfect sizing on the king queen four, betting range. He has a betting range, not, he's not betting whole range, but he has a betting range. Going small, okay. This guy's also tricky. Uh, I don't think he would bet tens and jacks, so that's good. Uh, so he's saying like he has a ace queen and queen jack. So I'm going to check back knights. He didn't bluff with the jack 10. Okay. <clears throat> so, yep, that strategy. That strategy is then uh, being uncapped on turn and facing then double check range. Then you can put more pressure. You can wrap more. And definitely you are uncapped so his delay seabed will face a lot of stronger range and people will not gonna know how to respond because they will suddenly uh, like be feeling uh, okay suddenly I'm 
in the late Civet in Bad Review getting shroud on. What is shrouding on me now? How is this happening? He's now wrapped nothing. And actually, we're just gonna have also all of the slow plays from the flop. We're gonna have all of the top pairs. So when he goes small on the turn, let's say, or he goes like delay C but half on the turn and block on the river, and we start jamming like king, queen, king, jack hands. Uh, and he's gonna have like weaker king, or he's gonna have like pocket queens, and he's gonna feel okay. What he's now wrapping, nothing like, and yeah. So definitely the best strategy is on the situation on the on the, in the situation where the people need to bet range when they are usually betting a lot you see the guys betting 77 percent of times so basically betting range on most of the 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 the, the boards even when he's checking on the board it actually is the bet range uh we can actually he see he see his delay see but you see like he's now he he checks on the queen do say with ace queen and then goes uh or bet on turn uh and here he had jack so it's always middle strand hand um Middle strand hand trap because he will bet the bluffs there. Uh, and if when you face it, opponents that are tricky, they're gonna also check completely like shit of, of the hand and then just uh, count on that that you will think that he's never gonna have this. So you, you will also face, you always need to know people will be tricky. So if he's gonna be tricky and you, you will still have a lot of really good hands because you're gonna check behind the range. And he's not gonna uh, uh, he's not gonna be able to bluff you off that easily because when you check back and you have a top pair he's not gonna fold you out of that top pair because you're just too high basically in the range to fold it and he's delaying C bet and stuff like that so generally he will not gonna have profitable situation if you check back range in these situations so my advice to you is when they check a sex sex and king x sex and some queen x sex boards from the small band against the button to have a checking range. I think that's great strategy. Uh, Queen 7 5, we're gonna go bet. Uh, pretty strong board for us. Uh, let's see what he called for bet with. We are forbidding most of our ace queens. So, definitely great spot. Okay. The play is jam, guys. The play is jam. With aces without the hearts, we're gonna jam. Our main bluff will be like king 10 and ace king. So that also like to be jamming. We're gonna have some ace four and ace 10 also. Ace 10, ace four of hearts like this. Ace 10 of hearts adores this play. Okay. So guys, if you are for it, like the video and we will make a live stream and we can play together and talk while playing. I also did get a few of you on my Discord where you ask me where I am, what is doing, why, why the new videos are not coming. And I said I'm alive. I'm alive. And some of you said, I'm, we are kind of missing you. And I said, how is that? Like, how you kind of miss me? That's like you say to me, like, you are like, like it's not you, it's me. Like when uh, you're uh, a kid and the, the girl you like said to you, like, it's not, it's not you, it's me. It's the same thing. Then I said, don't, don't say to me, it's you kind of miss me. I want to see you badly miss me or you don't miss me at all or you hate me, but please don't be the worst thing in life in every aspect of life is middle middle is the worst uh and average uh, so uh you will have better chance against a girl who hates you than against a girl who didn't who, who gives the shit so uh the worst thing for me is like that he said like we kind i kind of miss you no I, and then the guy said no 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 i really miss you like he probably said uh, just to be just to be uh, fair and uh, uh, nice but you know uh, I want to hear like 
that you really missed the content that I make because I'm always going to give you uh, 100% of, of, of everything I know and uh, actually I'm going to fall because the guy's opening only 19%. So no, nothing. I'm on my Discord. We have guys that have, they play high stakes, small stakes, low stakes, and I'm going to give my opinion on all of these guys. So guys playing NL10, NL5, he puts hands, all of us just comment the hands, talk about strategy because... Yeah, I, I just think that's the way to go. I definitely think it's way to go, like to be like that, you know. Um, let's go. I know all of it. We're gonna have, we're gonna have pocket sevens, pocket fours, pocket four. Ah, we're gonna go actually, oh, like half pot. I think half pot is nice. I think half pot looks more value heavy. Oh, the orbit looks. Mm, I don't like the orbit. So I appreciate every comment you said, uh, and yes, I'm gonna always in my videos. I'm, I give my best, always my best effort. Sometimes it's gonna be. Uh, sometimes it's gonna be. Sometimes it's gonna be wrong. Sometimes it's gonna be spewy. But yeah, that's 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 that's, that's poker. These things happen. So. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna wait a bit nines in this section. He needs to step turn a little bit queen with good queen, block river with a good queen, so he looks like he's gonna fold and we're gonna now bluff like all of our hands that we're rarely gonna win on showdown. So betting with nines is gonna have a lot of sense, so we have a lot of value range, so we can be easily make indifferent. And that's the point. And also, I always showed like bad sessions, bad streams when I play bad. And I had like one stream when I played the worst, but probably the worst I played in two years. I had a full stream, and I and I just and also the, the few videos where I played really bad, that where I made where I made mistake that a lot of people will probably do. So I think if you just show the best of you, it's gonna be pure fake. Uh, because all the, uh, the truth is always some, somewhere in the middle, so you're not good as your best videos and you're not bad as your worst videos. So definitely the truth will be somewhere in between. So it's always best to show uh, show how it is because, you know, you can't... People know, people play against you... Uh, you, you uh, there's a good sentence of uh, Abraham Lincoln where he said, "You can fool uh, some people all the time. Uh, you can fool all the people some of the time, but you can fool all the people all the time." So it's always best for, in my opinion, it's just best to be like how it is, always how it is, and that's it. And learn, learn from. Uh, okay. Learn from mistakes, learn from bad sessions. That's the key. That is the key. I check back here. We want to learn from... The best is to learn from other people's mistakes. But it's really hard to to learn from other people's mistakes. If you don't get if you don't get burned, um, hard 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 to learn. Okay, I'm gonna go here. Oh, we can look at Heaven Bell. Okay. I will tell you uh, what is our image to some of our opponents. We're gonna go orbit here. Usually on Ace King Five, you want to orbit or check. So we're gonna go orbit, and this guy called calls tribute, which is weird, but happens super a lot on my poker. Super, super often happening from Rex also. So whenever I see that people are cold calling a tribute, whenever the board, I think 
like a lower board I'm gonna just have checking range um, also this kind of board I'm gonna have check range just because I feel their cold calling tribute range is gonna be like eight nines tens a lot ace queen suited ace queen off king queen suited type of hands from weaker players or fish so I'll just have a check range on these boards and yeah even some ace xx boards like ace middle middle card to tone check range is best to play because our range is going to be linear we're going to have a lot of over pairs and his range uh, is going to be middling to ace x suited also so yeah um, now the question is do we want to bluff with the ace queen in the multi way pot uh, because we're going to have even king queen here a lot and ace king I don't know, still. Okay. I'm glad I didn't. Glad I didn't. So basically guys, this is the welcome back session. Uh, welcome back. And uh, I hope we will have a nice time in future. And I'm going to a live session in 21 of March, four days, uh, four days. I'm mixing, so this combo will be folding, but I'm missing half of the sevens against the cutoff. And I hope I'm going to make, the plan is at least one, one, one video a week, at least, and maybe one stream, if there will be audience and people that will like to be with me and stream, talk with me, play with me, talk strategy, let me know in the comment or like the video and I will know that you want to see a good stream or me on the stream. It can be good, bad or terrible. It depends. So it's never the same. It's pretty sick hand here. We're going to see. Pretty, pretty sick hand. Pretty sick. Really sick. Let me see the size that he called. We're gonna go block the river. This is crazy. He called. I mean, okay, it's not. I slipped on. It's not even four x. Insane. Insane hand. I just check gem with aces. I'm gonna call here. Ah, uh, this is the board we win. The, the guy see, but only forty-two percent. So I'm gonna go with donking. Gonna go with donking. You have guys now that's gonna always raise and uh, always raise the over pair. And against these guys, we're gonna have a clickback range. And this hand can go with that clickback range if you want. Uh, because now when they are raising a hand that shouldn't be raising in a, in a board where we have such advantage, then we need to go be aggressive and go with a lot of true betting. So it's definitely nice to see what they're doing against the donk. This guy immediately called two times the donk. Uh, unfortunately, he called called donk and called turn and fold river. So we didn't see what he had, but when we get sample, it's going to be pretty nice to know. For example, when you see that the guy called aces and kings in that spot, it's going to be pretty significant to know that. Is he raising poker jacks? It's also important to know. And which type of bluff he's raising, which is he always calling ace jack, king queen? is king because all of 
these questions gonna have effect on our strategy guys yesterday crazy action crazy crazy action a lot of tables today not that much today not that much If not, we will switch to stars. We will see a little bit. So the guys, you know the plan. The plan will be grind, like full, full-time grind this month. Full-time grind. And trying to crush, trying to crush. And the good news is that everything we we do well it's just gonna go into the role for moving up uh, i actually quitted playing super sport uh poker uh because they support said that now the trackers are not allowed anymore i asked them before uh when we were we were talking about cooperation and they told me i asked them can i use my hud on your side they said okay uh but now they decided that trackers are not allowed anymore and they actually did uh ban one player he, they gave him the money back but they banned him for playing so i decided to leave last year i played mostly 500 and my win rate was over 16 bbs but now i mean there's basically zero chance that if i continue to play they will the guy actually reported himself he showed uh he showed gonna go um I'm gonna go slide a little bit the guy reported himself which is sick he sent them the picture of him using the the, the hud and they said okay you're using the tracker and tracker is not allowed and and even i haven't written that they did allow me to use it but that's why they gave him the money but they did actually ban him so okay uh we're gonna go block here and we're gonna go small block Okay, so definitely guys, uh, I'm not gonna now, no, now play Super Sport, I play Super Sport 500 uh, because Super Sport is basically um, really, <laughs> the site is, okay, the site is really, uh, really uh, bad, full with bad players. And I played it next to uh, played it next to uh, next to Poker Stars. So th that was basically one or two tables more on my grind, and now <coughs> and I mostly play an L uh, five hundred. Did a good year. Uh, I'm gonna go almost a pot here. Oh, this had a good year, I have to say, but there is a zero chance that I, I would get banned or something like that. But I, I, I couldn't, I, I wouldn't feel right uh, playing if they said that it was. If it's banned, then I'm not going to play, and that's it. I can play without without the HUD, but I don't want to do it. Isn't I? I know the most of the players. Basically, I know them all so it's not like i need to have hard but i also don't like i was playing 200 and 500 and mixing these limits and on ipoker 400 i mix so mixing these limits uh, look at this the guy is just betting range and everything Okay, fives has sense. Probably keep barrel in the turn because Jack is super good for him. When we only call, I think he needs to be betting fives and turn them into bluff. He doesn't okay. So basically I'm stuck now now with uh eye poker and stars. I have far better deal now on stars. 
Mm, but I have so many depths on that poker, so we'll see what I'm gonna do. Probably gonna mix it, and yeah, I'm not gonna mix limits a lot. I'm just gonna go trying to grind it and going to bigger limit to to no, to new limit. So full grind this month, a live event where I'm gonna play cash and tournament. It's gonna be interesting. This guy is super super tight and he's rebating button. Big one versus button. He doesn't have pull right range for sure. And then he's gonna call. I would say it's gonna be around maybe 8% of that's gonna look like nines, ace queen, some a jack in queen, suited broadways. That's how his range is gonna look like. If you remember guys, he go with on king xx he go with a pot. Almost a pot, like 75%. Checks the turn. Okay. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have jacks, queens and kings. He would bet it for sure bigger size. So he hit at the ace probably. And we have a hand that is clearly a call. And I know I'm not good, but our hand is always a call. He hit the ace king, you see? You see like how he's transparent because uh, for sure he would bet aces and kings like this. So we can actually, if I'm gonna have a little more sample that can confirm my doubts, um, what we can actually do is we can just immediately raise flop. I mean, he would call with ace, it doesn't matter, but generally about his range, what we want to do. Uh, our hand is call on the river to block. There's no other way. But he's so transparent, you see, like, uh, he bet on the king xx uh, with, with strong size. There's no way he's betting jacks, queens, and kings, and aces on the 10xx. Uh, check here, our hand is not three street value. He folds 47 on flop, he needs to fall, call here pocket pairs. Uh, his floating range is going to be a lot of queen x. We have easy call there and turn hands that he can bluff. Uh, sucks having like a 10 of clubs because a lot of his floating range is going to be with this. Um, also the queen of clubs is here, a lot of his floating range. So he kind of wraps like a king jack plus for radio probably and bluffs. Now need to be like turning pocket fours with a spade, pocket fives with a spade, ace jack, uh, hand square call of course, pocket fives he turned into bluff without the spade, okay, so he probably or bluffs, probably or bluffs. So let's say once a week with video and if there is enough if there is enough will for you guys for to, to see a stream let me know with the comments with liking a video and we can also make a live stream. I always enjoy with live streams because we can talk in in real time. I'm gonna go small. Half pot or, or half pot one third is both okay. And let's see, smaller versus big blind, how he plays. Uh, I don't mind going, if we're betting the turn, we're gonna go 200. 200 here. If we're gonna do it. I think we're really showing the strength now. And his check call check fold is 99%. So this guy has for sure uh, we're gonna we're not gonna do it guys. I'm 
We also have four six. He calls us off, but the play is good. I like the play. He gonna probably call only us. And I think about the size. Do we want to go all in or two X? And the rear is four. When he calls here, you see like his check call, check fold is it was 99, now it's 71. So for sure he has a king queen, king of hearts, ace king, aces, and that's it. Seven necks. He doesn't have much because he's on the he's on the tighter side, so he's gonna have some, but he's also C betting some, check raising some. So I think I'm just gonna go like two X uh, with all my seven X. I'm not gonna go all in. Just having two X on the rear, I think it's fine. But again, we are bad imagers. Uh, we are really bad imagers. We have to accept that. Uh, let me see here. And this is his first call. So if I saw that, so look at this. When the when the flop is twenty five to sixty five, uh, and the flop was fifty. Fold to after calling the turn, he folded one hundred percent. So he folded four out of four times, and now if he fold four out of five times, so I like the play because. Um, First, he's gonna have some ace x of hearts hands and king x of hearts. Yeah, but if he called the aces, he'll pretty much, but maybe he'll think that king, having a king with a heart is not good, I'm not sure. But I just think it's gonna be profitable because this guy can. I mean, he called us, but he, I don't think he would ever call anybody else at the table with a, with a two X pot on the river. And I think it's when we like it's under bluffed when when we start bluffing the river here. Here's this guy. Look at this. We need to fold king seven here. Okay. Now I'm just thinking, do I want to go all in against this guy? Just, yep, just from the balance point, I feel like 2x, because he's gonna have some 7x, so like having every 7x and straights just into this range. Okay, let's see, he's going to show down. I think below half pots, no. I think that's okay, like betting any, any 6, any jack. Uh, we got blocked, guys. We got disconnected. Okay. Okay. Let's go like this. And my read is saying that we have to bluff against him. Yeah. And we're gonna go through that here. I like the play. I only need to check a bunch here. But against this guy, we're not gonna check a eight. Okay, which size I want to use here? I'm gonna actually go more polar size. Because we're gonna check a bunch here, so my betting is gonna be a lot less frequency, so I'm gonna increase my size. Checking range and this for three. Ah, oh, this is weird. This looks bluffy to me because with the with the flush, I think he's going bigger on the river. He's going bigger on the river. We're gonna call. We have a fish there. 
Okay, he's going bigger on the river. Let's see. After betting, generally, how he plays. You see, like, he's having this orbit range a lot. So I would discount the flush here and even set some. Gonna... So he's now repping like an ace jack and ace queen with a diamond. Let's that. So I'm gonna call with eights. Um, folding here. King five call. Queen's block. Ace ten open. Calling here. Check back with the king five. Betting small. Queen jack nine. Uh, we're gonna go three bet here. I'm gonna go block. I think it's okay. We're gonna bet small. Call just because I don't think he has a king, uh, but he did raise with the eight. I think king and spades are just betting the turn, so he doesn't have it. And I don't think he's gonna raise with eight. Meaning, decent chance he's gonna bet eight here. Okay. Usually, fish against the block, they know to just go random a lot just random really a lot so i don't mind calling it because i don't think flush and king will be often there and now i'm thinking do we do we want to turn it into into, into bluff shove because i don't think he's gonna have any full house in the range but against the fish we don't want to do it i'm <coughs> going 7.5 against 3x it's okay especially from guys that four bet a lot but don't call enough when open 3x this strategy is then printing a lot i still like the bluff i just like it because we have so much value that we're gonna always play like this and when he calls king i think it's pretty obvious that his range is gonna be uh this guy would fold like all the under pairs uh he's calling with the with a good draw mostly not flush draw king top pair as a king x that called was king queen and king x of, of heart yes we are trying to fold up strong range but the guy did fold every time in this situation but against us he called i mean he has aces i want to see what would be happening with the king there. I mean, basically it's better to have king than aces because with that king, he's gonna block. With aces, he blocks a7, that's also key. So I think with aces, he would call a shove also because mostly a hand that's gonna jam, it's gonna be a7. Even I wouldn't have jam range at all, basically because I think his range is gonna be mostly around these top pairs and uh, or and aces so just 2x i think it's better just to have like all the trips in the 2x range so what i what i'm trying to say i think that i think i think that on the river i'm just gonna have 2x and no shouts because if not, I would have the split range because I don't think I can show any 7x. But like this, I can just pet 2x any, any 7x. And it's still pretty, pretty hard for him to call, especially if you saw like he folded that. I, I, I think he's folding against any, any other player. Uh, let's go back into the ace river pop up. You see, like. 
he's after after he calls turn over position he's falling to an over bet 53 percent but when you go to a bit to, to to when it's deeper he he's falling 80 percent and it was before this call 100 percent and his range is super 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 strong after calling turn because you see how much he falls to flop and turn 50 53 83 i think against this type we just want to bluff i think it's also under bluff when the king goes there because now suddenly we need to fold him out of like king plus we need to fold him out of that range um and like i don't think a lot of people would try to fold out a peep a player but when the river is four and i have uh, river was and i have four six off in the range what was the river uh three right river was a three no the river was a, yeah three was a three so i have four six off so suddenly my weather range is extremely it's like my weather range now is going to be any seven x that i have five seven of seven six of seven eight of seven nine of seven ten of so i have like mm, a lot of combination of sevens let's say uh Five seven. So it's gonna be fold here. It's gonna be around fifty. Around fifty. Uh, fifty combinations plus four six off and four six suited. That 16 combos. I'm gonna have 70 combos of value, guys. 70 combos of value, and I can have bluffs. 70, 70. I used to export so 0, 067, 47 combos of bluffs. I can mess a little over bluff and if he's over falling that he is I can bluff even more but if I want to be like in if I want to make him indifferent I need to have you see like how many combos of bluffs I'm going to have now I'm thinking do I want to bluff with this hand yeah I think I want it didn't work out but I think it's good Uh, we're gonna orbit here and I'm gonna go like this check is three always now let's see his check behind range here. He generally falls to see that seventy five by the intrigued pots, and I don't see a hand, so I don't see which what, he, what how his check behind range looks like fifty seven percent, but we don't see. So definitely, I need to know more. I need to know. The point is, I need to know more if I want to bluff with this type of hand. I want to know what, what type of range I'm attacking. Is he? ever checking back a flush here is he ever back ch checking back a 10 is he ever checking back gates with a heart stuff so i need to know what type of range i'm generally attacking on turn and how to play it on river how my range looks like with delays how much we are checking and i'm using actually strategy here of uh, 20 percent on the flop so we're gonna have big little more of the bets uh if you're using like 20 percent, then we can bet more with our uh, queen jack king queen king jack ace jack with a hard type of hand uh, we're gonna bet uh, over pairs with the heart mix with sets mix with over pairs without the heart so definitely we can bet a lot more if we use 
you can also use 10% but 20% I think it's ideal uh, but you can use also 10% it's also GTO to use on monotone boards in these situations but 20% is great make a job done um, makes a job done so yeah ace three is basically check fold don't think it's very good to delay but if we know he is constructing his check back range poorly it has sense to do it, it has sense okay now let's see how he constructs his check in range i think generally people on this type of boards are okay they struggle on low boards pair boards but like a sex sex they are decent um triple check first time he triple check uh, okay i'm gonna bet he's betting queens kings for sure ace for sure so we are taking the under pairs Fortunately, he had 10. Jack 9, I'm going to trim it. This guy folds super a lot against the big blind. This guy I'm not gonna play heads up unfortunately. So I'm gonna prepare the new table on the right. I didn't know for this uh, really nice future, just a table and you're immediately uh, you're immediately in a, uh, in a, like a next in a row for the new table. So definitely nice nice future. I didn't use it before, I didn't know about it. But the guys in Discord told me, yeah, why, why are you not using it? I said I didn't know about it. But really nice. I always thought before, like how, how, how somebody just quickly joins the table. I, I was always saying they 100% are using scripts, but it's not, it's not necessarily like that. There are still scripts, of course, but maybe I think not that much as it was before. Before it was way, way more. Because now I, I, I saw that some sites did bend using the scripts. But still, there are there are like word going on that some players are using a script even even on uh, poker stars they are suspects and the players are suspecting i didn't want to accuse nobody they asked me what i think i said i don't know but one player from poker stars i can say his name is tony adams his nickname is tony adams that is actually a short stake winner People think that he is using script. A lot of them is actually thinking about that. I don't know. But I know that on um, using a script is, for me, it was really annoying before. Now when I have these options, it's looking better. Because before maybe somebody just click like this and going into tables and I didn't know about it and I was thinking oh he's using a script so I don't want to say nothing but definitely there are and this is weird that the guy is super unaggressive uh, bet check bet really low really really low which is gonna fall so I don't want to accuse nobody but generally it's 
really unfair advantage using these scripts. Uh, we're gonna check do six five. We are against thirty nine calling the eleven. It's fifty percent of range. Okay. He's checking back. Now betting pretty feels weird. Check flop. Okay, he has some. Fold against him. He's he can check here hands like a six, five, even seven. He's really passive, not stabbing a lot, so he can check behind like a gut shot or open and draw or just a seven X hand that's usually stabbing this type of boards. So definitely yes. Really, really passive, and I don't think he's gonna bluff much in this line. King eight, we're gonna go small, understand queen. Let's see generally how he go big one versus button, what he's calling, just to see his floating ranges. We saw that he didn't raise a king. Uh, he didn't raise a king jack on the king xx. Now he's raising queen ten deuce. So I think he's more polarized. He's not gonna have many top pairs. Basically, from what I'm seeing, because people that are calling a king jack on a king xx, they're gonna be raising out of top pair hands. And here we're gonna go with the lower bet. Uh, we're gonna go twelve. He's sipping only 30%, but he's double barreling a lot. We're going small here with this hand, okay. A really weird side, don't know what that means. Going one big blind and turn. Like he's trying to see am I kept probably? Probably. Really weird. Mm. Uh, call. Usually when the line is weird, it's it's gonna be really heavy. When the reg is doing something weird, uh, it's gonna be really heavy most of the time. <laughs> because he shouldn't be betting turn with one big blind. And whenever he's doing that, that you're doing just shit with the hand, people are not creative without a hand enough. Especially weak regs. So I should have fought river without the heart. But we are stations. And that's not such a bad bad thing. Generally, it's not such a bad thing to be. Because when you're playing aggressive style and you're playing and barreling a lot, if you're going to be a folder, you're not gonna be doing good. People get play at me. I showed them my Discord like 15 times I bluffed Bluff Sheldon River, where I called with like bluff catchers. Because when you play like this, when you're gonna play like this, we're gonna go actually here, and, uh, we're gonna go 75. Um, when, when you play aggressive style, you're generally gonna be a played back at really, really often. Um, I'm gonna check back with a screen.
go all bet and we're gonna go like this and give up in table number four Check here. Check call. And let's go to the multi pop up, guys. Let's see his step turn. Zero step turn on small blind. He should be having eight text on the small blind and all. So pretty weird. Uh, we're gonna go uh, like this. E seven is called. Table number four. Whenever it's we were line, it's for value. This guy is also specific. We played heads up, we see four point four point two K hands. So this guy is weird. But he also has my hat, so he will probably also make a lot of exploit plays, so I need to take that into account. Uh, I didn't use a shove size uh, here because I want to have really bad taste king with a king of half, king of spade. But now I'm thinking do I want to? In game I thought I want to but now I'm not sure. Now I think now I feel the play is jam actually. And to turn like ace king into bluff without anything or ace jack. Now I actually feel that, that the play is a jam. Now I actually feel that the play is a jam, guys. Because I feel he's gonna have a hand. He's gonna have a lot of four and ace four. And this guy is check raising also ace four. Is he gonna bet ace four and turn with small size? I don't think so. So mainly he's gonna have fours or a flush. And that's it. So jam looks pretty good. Had a six seven. Mm. 
didn't bluff turn or you were Mm -hmm. Against us, twenty-eight percent of range. Yeah, he's gonna have really wide. Folder. Definitely mistake, guys. I need to shove there. I was thinking immediately like how my range looks like, do I want to, but I thought like he did check raise, I thought he's just gonna have a lot of flushes so I can go to better king and we're gonna have a lot of ace kings with the king of spade but now when I think better I just feel, I just feel actually that the gem is the play. Okay. I think he's jamming a lot of tens, most of the jacks. I, I would say all of the jacks. I'm gonna go half to meet this hand. I don't usually do it, but I think in this situation is okay. Long it up, of course. I'm gonna check back with the king queen. Seven nine. Okay, I'm gonna go small. Check here. Going ahead. Let's go half. Hmm. Falling here. I'm gonna stab the turn here. Holding rear. So it's gonna call here. Going pot. I don't go seven point five. Holding here, trade I think ace ten, ace four suited. I'm gonna go 
look for it. Blind Fist. Let me check it there. I don't see many value in raising here because I don't think he's really betting um, for sure he's not really betting like 8x here so or pocket 6s or I don't know pocket 9s so we can only call here he's wrapping an ace So definitely spot where we can only call. See how he plays against me, 24, 28 aggression, like I didn't see any, any stats like this in. So he's super, super tight, rebating only 10%. Awfully, awfully, like to play against, this is, Nitty nitty insane. I don't know, but green does jack. It's checking the turn. Calling the rear. All right, fold. Like against us, he's really, really heavy in any spot. But still is capable of such some weird plays for sure. I've seen it. This side is also really, really heavy to him. I mean, our hand is always a call in this situation. He is tight, but we can fold 100% GTO calls. I'm gonna go small, small turn block river. Tributing on table number four. Falling here. Today not not much action guys on Oh it's going small here. Now it's actually picking up. Really boring heads up against him, 
the guy is really insanely playing like I never seen stats like this in heads up game. Really big turn for a range for a bluffing range. I have come to two other tables, so we're gonna leave. I'm, I'm gonna leave heads up because it, the guy is playing like this. Usually, I would play with him. But I want to concentrate to talk more about hands. So we're gonna leave. Then we're gonna leave. Because I got into the two really decent tables. Okay. Let's see what happened there. Bigger here. Really, really <laughs> boring. But he knows sometimes when he's tilted, he plays completely different. Really crazy starts to blink. We played and he was super tilting. Uh, he ran over 2k. We play six table, he ran two point something K above EV. He lost like he was finished losing, but like, he was run insane on super tilt, like playing super super tilt. You see how tight he is. And when he was tilted, he like three bet three nine suited and, and he's threatening ten percent his calling a Jekov in a in a heads up. So let's see what happened there. Okay. King four, let's see this hand. Okay. Nice call by this guy. Now it's actually tables are starting to picking up. But definitely, um, pool on eye poker is far, far weaker than on stars. So that's why I need to just stay to show you that. Because I, I just can't believe how my sample in 200k hands, the, the sample that I had, it's completely insane. And the worst is that I really did play, I did have some moments where I didn't play great, but generally I did play good <laughs> feel like he's a little bit tilted actually but here he is a little bit tilted We're gonna go like this. We're gonna go three X pot. You have like you see you you have players like this, like all of them are calling small blind. They have call range and small blind. Look, look at this. Uh, this guy has also small blind versus early. He's gonna call pocket deuces, threes, fours. 
this guy is actually decent i have to say this guy is decent and i mark him as a good reg but not the best not like a top reg but good <coughs> i would actually say that he is the best uh, of all my opponents but he's not near uh guys like anarchy like random bluffer like mad tilt nomads definitely he's not near that guys but for for this pool he's he's a daddy for all of them big daddy don't like my size and that hand with queens i just think now how the jam would be such a such a great play jam would be terrific but okay you will have to forgive me that i mean i didn't make video for a month so i did time out a few times i didn't uh knew what i want to say a few times so definitely i did uh but it's first time after a longer period of time the next video will be better a lot better and i will definitely play better but still i think there was interesting spots and still feel we're gonna get something out of the video mm, let me think about the size here what we want to do i actually don't mind immediately going over but i like queens kings pocket trees i really like this size this is interesting board because the guy is ah, so look at what he calls 619 he's gonna have many many top pairs here i'm gonna actually go big against him See, he's calling small blind and really narrow range. It's gonna be pocket pairs. Basically, four, sixes, fives. I like sevens. Ah, true. Against the UTG, he's gonna probably even have nines. And that's it. He's not calling seeded connectors, so basically, bluff is impossible to have. Even if he has had like king queen i don't think he's calling king queen off so i don't think he has king queen he threw that this so mostly pocket pairs of some ace queen off ace jack and ace will not bluff the river so he's super needy i'm not gonna bluff catch Trump 08, interesting nickname. <laughs> he 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 just gave himself that nickname. Insane. Like he couldn't think of anything, so I'll just call myself Trump 08. <laughs> like ttr like yeah you know this this like looks ttr ffg looks super super regish to me i don't think fish will ever call himself like this 
like fish nicknames are like Benjo. But like Toji, for pns This is all like you can assume like with 99% certainty who is wreck, who is not wreck. I'm gonna actually call here with jet five, jet ten five. We are trivetting a lot of strong jet X hands, a lot of jet tens, ten soul jack jack soul, so we're lacking a strong hands. And call one one three. I'm gonna actually go jam. It's thin, but I think it's the play. Angry Russian. I mean, he would lose like <laughs> I, I, he's losing on this end like thirty BBs, but I think on stars he would be losing like sixty. And this guy is okay, I think. Yeah, this guy is decent. This guy is decent. So basically a lot of pool is weak, weak regs and big whales and a lot of needs and that's it. So structure of the pool has a lot more whales than poker stars and the whales are a lot more aggressive, a lot bigger whales. If you're going to find players, you see like this is star type of fish, 39, 13 passive. And this is like, but usually they will be <laughs> a lot more aggressive like. So today I actually didn't play with them that much. So these are like the whales that are a lot, a lot tighter than usual. The usual one that I'm playing against. And on stars you are mo mostly going to have like this, like passive 30, 13, 30, 16 type of guy. But here you're gonna find like 50, 30, 3 with 20%, a lot of them. So definitely like structure is mixing between 3 bit and mostly 3 bit in this combo I'm gonna call. Okay, 5, 6, queen. Let me check. I'm gonna actually go with a bet small. Let's see his check back range just to see. Mm -hmm. Check, check, call, check, check, call, fold, check, check, call, fold. Uh, now we're thinking what we want to wrap, do we want to wrap? Uh, I'm gonna go actually wrap like a nanny pair. Okay. Basically, like sevens, eight x plus with this hand. <laughs> Usually, from what I saw, his checking range ah, a lot of ace high, slow pockets, and mostly ace high, slow pockets. So, I think to follow like pocket fours and pocket fives, the size is okay, ace high, like an ace jack. Actually, I can should be give up turn, I should be bluffing it, but. I decided to bet turn because I think if we bet turn we're gonna have a lot of rivers that we can wrap like a jack is super great river for us queen is not bad nine is great seven is great spades are good we're just gonna have profitable bluffs and turns and rivers 
we got complete bricks so i decided just to block to just wrap any pair just wrap wider he has hands that beats my way to bed so not We didn't try to fold out that. That's not gonna fold still. Bet one third. We don't want to bluff with a five a lot. We want to be bluffing the hands like king, queen, 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 ten, ace, queen, even ace, king. I think ace, five is gonna have uh, blockers to, to his folding range. So I don't like it. Calling here. Had a king jack. I think I'm gonna fold here actually. And if he's bluffing with hand like an ace 10 or ace jack, it's not good. With a heart like ace jack with the jack of hearts. And the thing is that we could be also dead. That's the thing. We could also be dead. He's probably gonna raise all two pairs on the flop like King Nine, Queen Nine. Against our one fifth. Hmm. The thing is that we don't beat especially in nine pairs, we don't beat like if I'm having a squee a uh, jack of hearts, then okay. For sure, race 10, but with ace 5, I'm not. If he's raising like an ace jack or ace 10, or a special hand like ace jack with a jack of hearts, not great. And even if we get there, if we had two pair on the flop, we're just gonna be dead. And this guy is like. He's check raising. I didn't see like any check raising. I see like he's didn't check raise ever. Now he's raising in position on that board. I just don't see that gonna be bluffed that much. Yes, the thing is like bluffs he can have that GTO likes to, to bluff with pairs. He likes to raise like low pocket pairs also in some spots, but I don't see like people are doing that and then bluffing on the red nine pairs like that just easily. There are the hands that we have the equity against. So yeah, I don't think it's just really good spot to be actually. I think on the flop, it's all good, but on the turn starting to be not that great. On the turn, it's not that great. This guy doesn't fold to trip it on the uh, preflop at all. Wide calling range, he's gonna be around, let's say, 18%. He's gonna have probably a standoff in the range. So we're gonna go one turn on the queen 10 10. Okay, and. He check raise with the six ten. 
he falls 60 percent now we got a barrel just to fold him out of the pocket pairs but i don't mind the check i don't think i don't think he's gonna check shove the turn i think he would raise a 10 a lot on the flop so we are basically trying to fold him out of pocket sevens sixes fives he's gonna call all of this on the flop His king can play like this also, it has sense. Because he wins still call worse than ace king. Oh, so he can really bet it one third. Hmm. I'm thinking about what if we raise here to wrap like a two pair. Because I don't think we're good. And I don't mind to do it. I think this guy is good. I think he will give credit here. To me, he looks like a Jack X and Queen X with Queen X. And I think our size looks really like a two pair. I'm gonna call having a fish there. Okay. I'm going to go more better turn. Damn, very bad ace king. Mm. I apologize, I got, I got on Skype. Uh, this is interesting, guys. I think we have to bluff the river for sure. I think we have to bluff the river for sure. Uh, I'm gonna just shove the river. A lot of our bluffs has to be 6x, basically. So definitely jam the river. Okay. I'm going to retrieve it. Against him, we'll go. We're going to have five bit range. Usually my strategy like 200 till 300 blinds just to have a call for the range. But against him, because this guy is just overdoing it a lot and he's, he's spewing and that's why I decided to go have a 5 bit range. We're gonna have bluffs, we can just mix Hands like ace queen off, hands like ace ten, ace jack suited, king jack suited type of hands, king queen, ready range still jacks, queens, king says is this king, mixing all of it. Okay. Hmm. 
we are fighting fighting today the run is way better than than what it was I have to say it but I did make a couple of miss plays and maybe that cost me around like let's say maybe one and a half buy-in that I could have played better but you have to give me credit because one month I didn't and it really it really feels weird when I now uh, make videos not like it's not fluid like it was and like when I made before I, I it was like drinking water like super easy now it's like you have you go uh -huh, what i want to say the minds go start twinkling in the brain and yeah definitely not that fluid like it was but yeah still i think it's gonna be okay for a welcome back welcome back video i think it's gonna be decent okay we're gonna check back the jacks bettings checking board is okay um now let's check back one more and we're gonna wait a bit river he called 710 suited to a trivet which i think is okay but he didn't raise the river he didn't raise the river guys like what what like what <laughs> you have to get insane maybe he didn't notice that he has a two pair that's the only logical explanation but all in all we did we did fine um do we want to do do we want to go with the with a donk, I think donk is her donk has sense. Donk definitely has sense. Um, <laughs> he folds a lot on the rivers. Turn pairs into bluff. Yeah, I'm gonna go with with this with this size ace jack <laughs> we're gonna go small here I'm going to block here. Really weird. Check river. I actually fold here. Ah, now this is dicey turn. And the guy looks super, super narrow range. Probably has nines that we beat. But I don't see them like bluffing with knights. And it's a big question if you're gonna have knights there. Big if. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, I mean, on the river now, 
I wanted to call for 34, but looks like. I don't think I'm going to go down there. Just like this call. Uh, I'm just going to go bluff the river. And we're going to go. But it's hard to find bluffs there, guys. Really hard. So we're gonna go put And this guy is super tight. I'm gonna actually don't join the river. Just to get ready from Ace, Ace King. I think he has. You see like how format range looks like, I don't think he's gonna have a screen off. And this guy looks like he's gonna have like nuts, like Ace King, Jacks Plus, mostly, and I think just, he had Kings. Kind of insane, now let's check here. Let's check call and let's go with an orbit here. And check river. So give up, he give up, gave up. Gonna fall to this side. His check can open. His range is ten percent, but it's, it depends. You can see hands like, but generally he's like calling a jack off. So if he's gonna use this polarized strategy, which I generally think this was when he wasn't tilted. These are the hands when he was tilted. I'm gonna go half just to wrap a king queen. Mm. 
we just drop a king queen there. Okay. Check here. We're going to check really, really about here. I want to check all. This is like really bad board for a range. Hmm. We're gonna have all the over pairs still. Hmm, I'm gonna go like this. I think he has some pair that he checked back. And he did with the king jack. I thought like an eight or pocket nines type of hand. A bit of flop. Let's go here. Okay. Uh, let's bet like this. We're going to wreck 9. We have 9x. It has 8-10. Eight, okay. King 9 this. This guy is super tight, like against us 8%, 12% general, it's gonna be 8 plus Ajax off. And he's using a big size here, so he's immediately saying he has a king jack plus calling. And when they are betting like this, like I told you in that previous example, so like top pair over pair, it's gonna be King Queen, probably King Queen plus. He checks the turn. Yeah, we're gonna just check behind. If you need to wrap like a like a like a king, I need to bet like like twenty three or twenty four. I don't like it, but I think we have to just fold out hand like an ace ten that bet. And we're gonna have him check behind range hand like a king ten, king jack, even king queen. I would be checking behind. I think I would bet this size. So we just run into the aces play like this. Okay. I like the bet. Um, I, I mean, I like the bet on the river uh, because when he bet like big, he's we are not gonna be against uh, under pairs like queens, like nine x. So he's gonna have a king or better, or he's gonna have a bluff. So our hand is perfectly fine betting because we want to fold out his hands, his bluffs that he bet, and he's gonna have like if we fold out even um, like ace 10 or like ace jack ace queen it's gonna be great queen jack is gonna be ideal so i don't think we can check back that because we have in the check back range all this we're gonna have these top pairs especially against his big size so definitely something to to be uh pretty weird
uh, 10%, this is not great. He's using this strategy, okay. So this is the strategy when you go one fifth a lot, you're going one fifth on the turn a lot, and one third, and one third on the flop, one third on the turn. And he's mixing a lot of top pairs, hence like a screen on the a sex x but a monoton board. Um, usually they're liking bluffs in this line. Or so this is gonna be fold. They're gonna be merging, having queens here, kings. And yeah. If he's gonna not gonna have like queens and kings because some of them are just putting top pairs here, then raising the turn is. From what I see, I think this guy, based on from what we played, I don't think he's gonna have many kings. He's just gonna check them a lot, and he's gonna be more toward with lower size with the top pair more, so. against him raising their turn would be disaster uh, generally it's not bad play we want to have a flop with our middle pairs okay no table Checking, a lot of checking on 378. I'm gonna check all the things. A really nasty river, guys. I think we have a clear call here. Um, a lot of. 9x hands wood barreling hands like 8 9 but especially hands like queen 9 jack 9 tight so pocket force mm, i don't think he would stab four hours guys uh, we need to probably call it for today for the welcome stream for the welcome back video for the welcome back video For the welcome back video. We gonna okay, I'm gonna go small or check nine. Here the GTO uses a lot of orbits on the flop immediately. Okay. We're gonna finish guys for today. Um we call here. Half pot and turn.
we're gonna finish for today and I hope we will see each other really soon if you did like the video please like it so we can grow the channel uh, if you didn't join my discord please join my discord there you can talk with us uh, we can discuss hands we can study together and there are over 600 of us 630 of us so definitely drop by if you didn't okay i'm gonna barrel turn feel we're gonna be snapped on the river because now we're not jamming the ace queen and we are not jamming the aces and kings so i'm gonna actually give up here he came out with a two pair he's just gonna have too many of uh, fives uh sevens eights even pocket trees he's gonna have so he's gonna be really connected so we gave up the river calling out a position five seven suited that's good that's why i like to use this size a really really good um yep definitely uh um i'll try guys to 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 make a video once a week at least and couple of streams if you're interested in uh it was my pleasure give me a a pass if i i was not doing a good job today because it was a big pause it, it just I, I just feel a pause uh in many situations i just felt um a little awkward you know so definitely it 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 took something definitely uh so definitely i think by again when i get into it more uh it's gonna be better uh okay for results for today and i'm gonna show you in the situation here so results for today guys are we are we were up a little bit four hours and 18 minutes um for today and yep i'm gonna show you the graph also for 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 uh, eye poker now since i started to play i started to play at 10th 10th um 12th of october 12th of october okay 12th of October of 2023 basically when I was banned from stars when my when my account was frozen so I played guys believe it or not I played I played uh, let me just see I played guys believe it or not 206 206 uh, let me see if it fits in the screen it fits so I played on iPoker from 12th of October till now I played 206k hands and guys this was the worst run I ever had in my life I mean we were down uh, we were actually down s around s five six uh, we were down six and we were winning by EV down five winning by EV so we were 6k uh, I think I was even more than 6k 
so 30 binds i was 35 binds i think uh, below review but things are better now it's starting to get better still not great but just having the biggest downswing and actually now be winning i think that's insane and if i was playing i was actually lucky i need to be really really lucky because just just uh having the big downswing and not losing like i if i play this sample on stars if i run like this on stars i wouldn't lose 62 binds that i lost in the previous uh downswing i would lost like for sure over 100 binds so definitely need bankroll management is the way to go um and i, I don't think there's other way guys uh because shit can happen like run like this is is possible it can easily happen we were just like look at this like like even it, it took like 180k hands guys we were down 6k and now it started normal run even in this normal run we are not like super crazy about uh, um, about vv and i didn't get this like setups that i was constantly having uh they just played a lot poorer and i did get some some flips to get go, going my way which was insane because all of this sample i didn't get anything um i hope uh you had a good time it's been for over four hours uh welcome back video for now and i'm gonna see you soon i'm gonna make video uh really soon i think maybe even in like three four days i'm gonna see so if you like it please let me know Tell me if everything was good, if you like the sound. I, I tried to put, you see, microphone is actually here. I see it's down below me and it is the best microphone on the market in Croatia. And I bought it because you said the sound is not good. So I wanted to give it the best possible sound. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you soon and take care.